it is it is a story for the ages because you you came to town and yes. uh, we had some drinks and then we did after, just, after just, a, just just a, just a mm. couple it's fine <laughs> we we had we had an advisable number of drinks yes uh, we, we had <laughs> the correct proportion of alcohol and then yep. you hit the sort of like uh, amount of alcohol in your blood where that makes you say I want to sing karaoke. And well, yes, and, and, yes. and part of it, too, of course, being that we were, as I recall, sort of sitting there listening to a guy sing the world's worst Coldplay covers. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, he was in he like was a playing, hotel bar. He was playing not just Coldplay covers. He was just on Coldplay covers at that precise moment. He had done, I think, Iron Maiden before that. It was very eclectic. Mm. It was very yeah. guy you hire to play a hotel bar at <laughs> sort of like 10 in the evening on a weeknight. Um <laughs> And this was obviously unsustainable. We were going to have to like go somewhere. But you said, "I want to do some karaoke." I did. And I did. I, I, you know, I'm a good host, so of course I want to to facilitate that for you. <laughs> we go for a look. We find a couple of karaoke places. The first karaoke place that's like private rooms. That's not what the vibe is. Disaster. Vibe is, not 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 what we were after. No, you want to sing to a crowd. Uh, yes. And so what we find is a sort of basement pub. Um, which has karaoke, very loud karaoke, and very cheap drinks, yes. which is mm. sort of a dangerous combination. And you have a couple of like songs you request. I decide mm-hmm. I'm not going to sing. I, I'm going to like stand there and watch you <laughs> sing. You can embarrass yourself. Oh, embarrass myself? Excuse me. I've never heard you sing before. Right? Sure. Like okay. this, this, this was the first time we had met. I was like, uh, like in person, and like I'm already quite drunk. I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a disaster. But I'll like show willing, you know, because we've come this far. I'm gonna sit and mm-hmm. I watch, and I'll like, you know, record you on my phone. Um, and you did the killers when we were young, yep. and yeah. brings the fucking house down. I don't, I don't know how you can sing that well when you're as drunk as I know you were. Oh, um, well, th- that's the thing. The more drunk you get, the better you can sing. That's yeah, just how it works. That has case. not it's been like my experience. Yeah. 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 We go and find someone slightly more quieter so I can, like, hear myself think and I can drink more right. tequila. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, it's, at, at one point, this girl walks over to me, right? Yes. And she, she leans over to me and she says, hey, yep. my boyfriend really likes your hair. Strange. Ooh. Strange interaction. <laughs> strange uh, strange thing so that, to say to a look, guy. Look, he noticed you from across the bar. <laughs> yeah. And he really liked your vibe. <laughs> thought I you mean, were cool. literally yeah. that. Yeah. I think genuinely what it was was that like us both having slightly longer hair for mm-hmm. the standards of Glasgow, which is like what mm. like shoulder length, if that like collar length hair. Yeah. Was that immediately made us the most interesting people in the bar, <laughs> and then you immediately like increased that by singing and singing well. So right, right. Mm-hmm, every mm-hmm. every guy in that bar was like, "I want to be best friends with that guy," but I'm too shy <laughs> to do it myself. So I'm going to send my girlfriend over. This is a normal thing for me to do. So many possible worlds, but we got this one. Welcome to the Worst of All Possible Worlds, the podcast that's been attracting your girlfriends since 2021. <laughs> I'm the Worst of All Possible Brian's. I'm the Worst of All Possible AJ's. I'm the Worst of All Possible Josh's. I'm the Worst of All Possible Guests. Thanks hey! For me. hey! Welcome hey, Alice. back, Alice! <laughs> um, I, did just, I just want to uh, finish real quick, though, yeah, just keep about going. This, this fucking guy. Um, yeah. there, because, were, there were a couple of guys, right? Because you did your second song. They were up to no good. They started making trouble in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> these these were not guys in like your American understanding. These were lads, right? These were they, lads, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yes. The, these were these were lads who were like up in town from Airdrie. Airdrie being a extremely grim Scottish like uh, exurb of Glasgow, right? Okay. And they come okay. into town for a night out. This was towards the end of it, so they were even drunker than us. You do. Uh, Franz Ferdinand, which is, you know, crowd yes. the local boys. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A- again, goes great. And we are now these people's best friends. <laughs> yes, yes, lads. They lads, are like lads. asking, they're asking you about your life, about your yep. hair, about New yep. York City. Yep. They're also asking me about myself. And I'm immediately sort of like a bit on edge here until mm. one of them 
extremely drunk, gets me in that sort of like, you are my best friend now drunk guy headlock. And he yep. sort of like <laughs> shouts in my ear, yeah, what's your pro lines? <laughs> and I, I just yes. And I, I think in that moment, I know that whatever Matt Walsh or anyone will do, we have won the culture war because the moment that a drunk guy from Airdrie is asking me what my pronouns are, that's that, that's like a sort of domination. You, you can't overturn <laughs> yeah. that. That's that's not going back in the bottle. You know? No. And I, I say she, her, and he's like. Oh, okay, cool. I wasn't like entirely sure how to like address you. He's like sort of doing that like cis guy charming sort of like embarrassed apologetic uh-huh. thing. And then he, we get talking about football. He's very gratified that I'm a Celtic supporter. <laughs> Uh, less, uh, he like owns me. He's like doing dunks on me for being an Arsenal supporter, and he's like, "I'm gonna text you. Give me a number. I'm gonna text you when they when they go out to City." <laughs> he did not do this, right? He was too drunk to remember to do this. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Something which Josh correctly predicted would not happen, yep. And, yep. and and that's it. That's the night. That's the rest of the night. Pretty much is wow. just. That's these so these guys and their girlfriends being aggressively supportive and also very curious. I felt like the fucking what's the movie where the the um um the the like Arab guy becomes a Viking? Oh, the thirteenth warrior. Yeah. warrior. The Michael Creighton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I felt like that. Like I, I'm bringing my like strange <laughs> exotic <laughs> customs to these people, and they're like very aggressively like welcoming to me. And you know what? It's because we exist in this free world. World that mm. is remained free mm. because yeah. of that's the true. brave men and women of Blackwater. Yeah, that's uh, right. Which is what we learned by playing today's game. <laughs> this garden is constantly watered by the blood of patriots. I hope that's that you enjoyed right. that heartwarming story because it's just going to be fucking downhill for <laughs> yeah, your no. listeners. Well, that, that's kind of like hell, baby. We should open up with something nice because the rest of this yeah. episode is not going to this be nice. Suck mm. fucking we dog are, dick. It's a jarring shift in tone. Yes, we are talking uh, Infinity Ward's classic question mark. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Mm. 2, not the one you're thinking of, the one that was released last year. Because this is Modern Warfare 2. Two. It's Roman numeral two. Two two modern number two. Two modern two warfare two. (laughs) Is this anything? That's precisely what it is. (laughs) You got it. I don't get it. They haven't. Um, they haven't gone to the thing. They've gotten to the point of like uh, Hollywood running out of ideas, where they're naming the thing the same thing. But then right. they haven't gotten to the point of like taking shit out, like the Batman. In a minute, like in ten years' time, you're going to get like dude. the modern warfare. Uh, <laughs> so obviously, I got every, the rheumatiz, Yeah. <laughs> every week we do case studies in the pop culture of a dying empire, and honestly. I cannot think of something that we have done on this show that is a more of a case study in the pop culture of a dying empire no. than this fucking game. I, yeah, I was more. amazed you hadn't done it already, to be honest, when you were I asking me I for don't things. play FPSs, and I don't think that's really something yeah. AJ does much of, and Josh I'm only very plays immersive. Well, so. let, right. let me and my little gamer reflexes take you into the dark <laughs> heart of American culture. She's so fast! She's the fastest <laughs> fingers in the West! They call her Glasgow's Sonic. <laughs> you gotta go fast, <laughs> right? yeah. I'm, I'm good at these games. I don't know how. Mm. I've just preserved the skill, even in my 30s so like occasionally I'll, I'll like get on the multiplayer and like hurt people's feelings for fun sure uh, sure <laughs> I wonder if I was one of those people because I got royally owned in multiplayer and when I, I, I think played like when it comes to the Call of Duty games it really is the multiplayer component that is the selling point for yes yeah. it's, it's Activision's Golden Goose mm-hmm. they've kept this going for a very long time Going back to pretty much the beginning of the series, Call of Duty has been first and foremost a multiplayer game, right? Yeah, I mean, they kind of had big, like, single-player set pieces in the, like, early, early, like, World War II set ones where they, right. would, rip, yeah. they would rip off whatever movie they felt like. Like, most right. noticeably Enemy at the Gates, they, like, steal the river crossing yeah. scene from that entirely. Well, and it, yeah, the, they, this comes out of the era where, like, half of all first-person shooters, if not more, were all, all World War II shooters. Yeah, it was yeah. just like it was this time with like Medal of Honor and Call of Duty and everything where it was like, OK, we're going to we're going to fucking storm the beach at Normandy again. Right. 
here we go. And it, mm-hmm. I remember it being such a big like sticking point. People being like, here's another fucking World War Two shooter. Yeah. Where now they're they're quite scarce. Uh, I mean, they still made one, uh, like a Call of Duty one a couple it's of true. years ago. Yeah. Just, just to like scratch that itch. Um, <laughs> yeah. To render Normandy in like modern graphics. Right. I mean, yeah. we're just going to yeah. get photorealism at some point. But yeah, no, I I remember playing the uh, Call of Duty uh, in the Pacific. I remember mm-hmm. there was like a mm-hmm. Pacific mm-hmm. one for the GameCube that I played that I gave up after like one or two levels because it was playing this game with a GameCube controller and it was mm. not. <laughs> oh, it was a rough, rough time. <laughs> I think really when Call of Duty comes into its own or really becomes what we know it as today was the release of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the 2007 game, yes. this was developed by Infinity Ward, which is the same developer that developed the game that we're talking about today. Yeah. And there was something about taking the game play of Call of Duty and dropping it in a quote-unquote modern setting mm-hmm. uh, that really just made people more engaged with it than had previously been the case. And since then, Call of Duty has mostly been yeah. set now yeah well, and we had we had it's kind of future but yeah. well, that's Ooh. true they did do a future one which is <laughs> even right. more of a fever dream and I'll, I'll, I'll like hold you to get me back on uh for that at some point but, uh but what was curious about the original modern warfare was that it was sort of like insecure about its own setting it had this like weird divide where on the mm. one hand it was like global war on terror sort of like you know ACU, well, MARPAC clad marines like kicking in doors in like the Middle East nebulously. But then right. it also got a bit like self conscious about that because it was trying to do like, oh, uh, you know, modern warfare. But on the other hand, it wanted to do kind of like a not quite a spy thing, but it wanted to do the like counter terrorist angle with the sort of like guys dressed in all black doing like ninja yeah. shit, repelling down things. <laughs> and the divide right. it made between that yeah. was that at the time was that the Americans get to do the like war stuff. And then we're going to get some British guys to do yeah. the like epic operator tactical stuff. Um, and that was, mm. was going to be the SAS. Uh, and they were going to be like the brand for that. And that kind of continues through to this game. The war on terror was something that was kind of tricky for games to break into, right? Like it was yeah. something that people were kind of angling at for a while. Like there was... You know, America's Army, which was made by the U.S. military as mm-hmm. like a recruitment tool right. where you could never play as the terrorists. The other team was always just depicted on the terror as the terrorists from your side. Mm-hmm. And there oh, I forget the name of the game. There was the one where you go and you like kill bin Laden that they put out in like 2003 or something. Oh, yeah. Like that. I personally prefer Night of Bush Hunting, the <laughs> game that Al Qaeda released in response. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that the biggest, the most popular war on terror games were the banner ads that were like fight Bush and then it would take you to something that's like win a free PlayStation if you just give us your social security number. <laughs> I won that game a lot. <laughs> and the other thing that that Modern Warfare 1 did was it, it brought a little science fiction into it right Mm -hmm. and they used a lot of tech that you couldn't have used in the previous generation with like overlays and you get like this advanced sort of targeting stuff not just your typical hud things but things being overlaid on the character models as you're looking at them yeah it's like it's like deus ex vision right Mm -hmm. like adam jensen's augmentations but the military has it now a a lot of stuff that's sort of like filtered down the pipeline from like cnn to this, to uh, to yeah. other stuff like the use of night vision, for instance, the sort of like mm-hmm. the the green monochrome like uh, overlay mm-hmm. on the vision. Uh, that's that's something that sort of like really comes out of this period is like people seeing it on news reports uh, and game developers going, "Oh, that's cool. We should do that." Doing that, and then it becomes sort of part of the visual language in general. And now you just have like guys on like the chans buying themselves like surplus Russian night vision goggles that give you like eighteen different kinds of eye cancer a second, so that they can like <laughs> be able to operate when uh, you know when the race war breaks out or whatever. And a lot of these sort of visual components were were more heavily codified in Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two. Mm. Now. Again, I'm talking right now about the game that was released in 2009. Yeah, Modern Warfare 2, about to, yeah. yes. This is number yes. two, not Roman numeral two. Call That's right. of only Duty, Modern Warfare, Arabic numeral two. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> not Roman numeral two, exactly. And, and, and this was one that laid a lot of the groundwork for what we understand Call of Duty to be now, mm-hmm. as well yeah. as setting up a lot of these characters uh, that do come back 
in the modern modern warfare 2 i hate this so fucking much <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but we're gonna have so many different names for this it's but, but be a couple great. of them were actually in the original modern warfare 2 call of duty 4 mm. modern warfare mm. 1 uh, oh okay that, the, the, the big guy the main guy our mustachioed beloved captain price that was yes. a, sort of like an npc they added a bit more character to for one of the world war 2 ones like he's you can oh, go back wow. you can see he's like in those too. So so it's like a it's like a cloud atlas situation. Like pretty, all these people much. keep or finding themselves. Yeah, yeah. Or he's like his great great grandson or something. <laughs> it, it is it is really weird the point where soap grabs Gaz and pulls him in really close and says I speak the true true. <laughs> I think the big thing though about 2009's Modern Warfare 2 that most people remember is of course the mission No Russian. No Russian. Yeah. That, Really you perpetrate a mass shooting. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. That fun. Because games are art now. It doesn't right. count sure because, are. like, uh, it's a big emotional moment and you're being forced to do it. You're like an undercover CIA agent being forced to perpetrate a mass shooting, <laughs> which in itself is a big sort of, like, eye-open emoji moment, right? Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> But you're like infiltrating a terrorist group who's gonna do a mass shooting in order to stop them doing a mass shooting. But you have to do the mass shooting because they're like, after we do this mass shooting, we're gonna do way worse terrorism. So you gotta right. like go along with it. Yeah, they they don't speak Russian because they want it to get blamed on America, and then they kill you, the American who is doing the mass shooting with them. <laughs> it, it is right at the legitimately end. Legitimately, a false flag mass shooting. <laughs> Involving crisis axes. Yeah, <laughs> but it also felt like these guys played Spec Ops the line and were mm. like, well, we got to say something about how war bad, though. Mm. Like, yeah. we have to do that now in a way that I actually feel like this Modern Warfare that we're that we're talking about for, for today's episode. You mean Modern Warfare 2? Yes, Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> <laughs> ah, um, it also kind of, I feel like, does a little bit of a ditto thing where mm. it really wants to be the last of us for some mm, reason. Yes, and then, like, yes. kind of halfway morphs into it and just turns into an abomination. Like, it feels like... The people designing these campaigns know that nobody's really watching and they're just like, yeah. I don't know, like oh. I played Last of Us. Do we want to just throw that in there? I guess I really I can't wait for the Craig Mazin TV adaptation. <laughs> 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 what what's really funny John is, is gonna be something it. something that's quite quaint now is no Russian mm. came with both a, a like a content warning before that was really a thing. Like yeah, a right. disclaimer that's like, mm. hey, this contains some like it contains scenes of a nature. Uh, but also it, <laughs> it gave you the option to skip it. Like when it came up, yeah. they were like, uh, are you yeah. sure you want to play this? You don't have to. You're not gonna miss anything out if you if you if you don't want to do it. Um, but I think and, too it was the, the 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 whole like being able to bypass it was kind of like, hey, you triggered you want yeah, to you can check yeah. this out or are you too triggered huh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Huh? that's true yeah. it's sort of like having it both ways yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's it's also a thing of just like following orders too is the other thing that like mm. this game the gameplay of call of duty is to teach you to follow orders at least yeah. in the campaign yeah yeah and so this one was one where it was just like well i mean you don't have to follow orders but you know really only pussies don't follow orders mm. you don't want to be a <laughs> pussy do you yeah and i'm like kind of i don't want to shoot yeah. children yeah. you also have like explicitly uh, as much choice as you usually have implicitly because the way the games are designed is uh, very linear and then going to a lot of trouble to disguise how linear it is and yes. so it is very right. much mm -hmm. like yeah, go here shoot guys once you shot enough guys uh, you know the, the NPCs do something and so like it really lays that bare and it, it's unintentionally I think an interesting piece of self critique yeah, yeah it's it's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Uh, Which one, Brian? The original <laughs> one. Right. It's very linear. It's very cinematic. It's very much following certain trends. It is also absolutely fucking incoherent. The story mm -hmm. is yeah. just mm -hmm. a, a mess. There's a million things happening. You just jump across the world because it, it seems to have a design philosophy that's like individual separate teams will make their stages and then they're slowly going to figure out how to integrate that into right. the story. Because mm -hmm. it's like you're going from like Siberia to that airport you do the mass shooting in to uh, Brazil to uh, Washington, D.C. Yeah, because sure. the U.S. ends up in full blown like nuclear but, war and then back to Brazil. <laughs> I, 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 th I think the sort of the design uh, with the writing of modern warfare too. 
one is maybe the best mm-hmm. example of like sort of the priorities that writing gets in in making these games where you know you'll have a, a creative director you'll have a game director who will have like a list of things that they need to tick off in making mm-hmm. it and the job of the writer is essentially to like link those things together and if yeah, you were handed right. like a you know an A4 like one page summary that says you know a, a get me from prison in Siberia to favela in Brazil to the mm. White House and put it all together, <laughs> you're gonna write some weird shit. I mean, it's just yeah. in the nature of it. The first memo back is just, okay, first of all, we're gonna need Keith David. And then from there, <laughs> yeah. no one's gonna care. I mean, I'm always, to I'm so always happy voice. to see Keith yeah, David. Board, yeah. um, it's interesting because I think that very characteristic, the thing of like, it's scattershot, but we have to find a through line, yeah. is very much the case with Modern Warfare 2 Roman numeral as well. Yes, um, yes. Because this game is also like such a strange collection of gameplay mechanics and ideas that are just barely held together by a thread. Mm-hmm. And a big part of that, I think, is the fact that, yeah, Infinity Ward is the lead developer on this, but it's with help from Treyarch, Sledgehammer Games, Raven Software, Toys for Bob, Beanox, Demonware, High Moon Studios, Activision Shanghai, and Activision Central Tech. All of these studios were working in tandem with Infinity Ward on this game. It's a mess. Yeah. I mean, this is this is sort of like pretty common. I mean, Rockstar has like Infinity Studios all working on yes. different things, but yes. they, they silo right. those things off pretty pretty strictly because you know whichever Hauser brother is screaming at you at that moment at least has a cohesive vision, and so what that means is that you and everyone you know are working exclusively on the horse testicles in Red Dead Redemption yeah, yeah, yeah. for like mm-hmm. you know yeah. seven days a week for a year and a half, right? That was a, a very important part of my trip to Edinburgh was going to the Rockstar North offices and just banging on the door and being like, "I want to talk to Dan Hauser now." <laughs> yeah, the games have some problems, Daniel. But so, so uh, but uh, compare that to sort of Bobby Kotick's shopping spree of studios, which will certainly be the worst thing Bobby Kotick has done. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah, Nothing yeah. worse than yeah, that. Yeah. You get this sort of like result, which I, I'm not quite sure how I want to describe it other than scattershot. I think it's sort of like it's a bit at war with itself at times. Yeah, because it's very clear that there are two big plots happening within this game at once. One, yeah. we gotta reinforce the what the United States is doing in the Middle East is good, actually, yep. Yep. because turns out they're invading us. Uh, and then also <laughs> that, hey, the Mexican cartel is also invading us simultaneously. Yeah. But it seems to me that the game itself was originally about the cartel. It was going to be almost exclusively about the cartel. And then all of a sudden, there's this assassination that Trump pulls off uh, against Kasim Soleimani, and the U.S. Army's like, hey, can you make this look good, please, for us? Can you, like, <laughs> maybe justify that this was a really good thing, actually? And they're like, well, we had this cartel game. It's like, I don't know, just graft it on, who cares? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, that that's definitely seems right, because mm. the beginning of this game has you assassinating Qasem Soleimani, right? Yes, like yes, that's, yes. That's, that's, yeah, it's so funny. This, the, this level, this game has so many levels that just keep going. This is two minutes long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah you, you are hiking it's, through a trail yeah, like somewhere on the... That's like, <laughs> like, yeah. most Half of the mission is a tutorial for how to run and climb yep. over obstacles. You're just going through a chasm that looks like a hiking trail outside of Gallup, New Mexico. I was like, wow, this is... Okay, I'm on the Navajo Reservation now. Yeah. And uh, then you end up in a clearing and you you launch a drone and and in a mechanic that you never do again, you guide a missile through this ravine <laughs> and you will not do this at any other point in this campaign. You have no. to move your mouse around to guide the <laughs> missile yeah. Uh, yeah. because the missile is directly under your control as missiles. It, this is the famous thing about missiles, of course, is uh-huh. that as we all know. You move them around as, yeah. as the, they the go. Missile, the yeah. missile does not know where it is. <laughs> correct. Uh, yeah. Correct. And it most of all, it knows that by not knowing where it isn't. Uh, yes. th- the thing is, right, like, as you say about these systems, they use them so disposably, and you just know mm-hmm. playing it that, like, some team in, you know, Shanghai or Singapore or Chittagong or New York or wherever spent mm-hmm. like a year doing this one thing that right. will only be yeah. used for this, which like a fraction of the player base is going to play, look at and go, neat, and then instantly forget about. 
But this is opening yeah. it up with a lot of, I guess you could say, pop, right? Because yeah. the guy is yeah, known he as... pops. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is known as Gobrani. Again, Soleimani, no. Gobrani, <laughs> yes. Um, Shmoshmani, I believe, was the original name, and they wanted to hide it a little bit more. They got his ass for those yoga yeah, nuts. And you're, you're in, you're in Al Mazra in the URA. That's right. Oh, that's right. Sake, yeah. Um, he, but yeah, he's because he's meeting with Russians for mm-hmm. an arms deal between mm-hmm. Iran and you know this is this is what's happening. This is the global axis yeah. of evil, right? And I blau, think, blau. and I think importantly, you are playing as Ghost, who yeah. is. Oh, let's this... talk about ghosts. Yeah. Let's. let's talk about ghosts. Oh. Let's talk about ghosts. Uh, Koblani. <laughs> yeah. He, ghosts. Okay, so he's the master chief of the Call yeah. of Duty universe now, right? <laughs> For some reason. Yeah, because they this hide was a his guy, face. Yeah, this was a guy who was like in the original Modern Warfare's as like a guy, like an NPC who they made a bit interesting by having mm-hmm. him yeah. wear a balaclava with like a hand-painted skull on it. Right. And right, those right. skulls became uh, a sort of like... A little fascist fashion item. I've yeah. seen mm. uh, oh, yeah. of, like Generation Identity uh, and like Identity Europa and and uh, Proud oh, Boys and such mm-hmm. wear balaclavas with skulls on them. I have seen photos of real ass like legitimate members of death squads in South America wearing those balaclavas. They yep. became like a a cool thing to wear. But then in this game, they sort of. Maybe the balaclava became too toxic, I don't know, but they rebooted him a bit, and now, in a war zone, in like, yeah. like 80 degrees under the sun, <laughs> yeah. the man is wearing a full costume skull mask that covers his entire head. Yeah, and to what end? Because, the because other it th- looks cool, uh, AJ! Uh, uh, yeah, no, I get because that. Because I don't have a face. Because all <laughs> because of have what has happened to me, I'm a ghost. it's made me a ghost. A soap. <laughs> soap. I've got gender dysphoria. <laughs> <laughs> Been doing voice therapy for two years, still fucking talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing where it's just like, it, it ultimately has the same thing that Master Chief does, right? In that hmm, eventually, because yeah. they at one point we see like the back of of Ghost's head because yeah. you know everyone he reveals his face to everyone else but not to the camera for and it's s- again always, for some reason yeah because here's the thing you can't <laughs> reveal what his face is going to be because he's just going to look like some guy yeah. right like there's <laughs> yeah. no unless he's like literally missing his whole face like there's yeah, it's nothing like, you can reveal that's going to be shocking it's about like my it. favorite moment in the new Star Wars trilogy <laughs> when Adam Driver first takes off his mask and he's not anyone in particular right like, you know it's not like a <laughs> yeah. twist and when I was I saw this back home in New Mexico and when that scene happened everyone just first went huh in unison <laughs> and one guy said oh shit He's ugly. <laughs> I, I, I just this is my Adam Driver day. I spent this morning talking about House of Gucci, mm. and now I'm doing this. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, yeah, that's maybe that's These it. These are like, just yeah, do, mock-ups. You, uh, oh, do you want some House of Gucci drops? Do you want some House of Gucci drops? Because yeah, do you I have, have mock-ups? Do you have mock-ups? I have so, I have so many. Ca- uh, uh, first of all. They're all Jared Leto, right? But oh, se- they have to be! But second of all... Past. <laughs> Criminal <laughs> tax evasion! And then my favorite... Wow! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, w- once we manage to destroy Gobrani, we are, we are underway. We have Rough begun doing yeah. the second modern warfare. Uh, we are at war with the entire yogurt yeah, industry. Y- that's right. The, the United States textually <laughs> starts modern warfare too. Like, that's true. Yes. Yeah. This, this is never reflected on. It's a like strike of choice. They never even go. Oh, he's forced a hand into it with the fucking Russians or whatever. They just don't mm-hmm. do anything. It's just like oh, he's a bad dude. Take him out. Which is about as yeah, much no, thought as blam. Trump put into it. Um, well, yeah. and and this is this is very twenty four, right? Like mm. that you know the U.S. government identifies a target, we go out, we eliminate the target by any means necessary, and the 24 similarities continue uh, when we see the main character that's sort of overseeing this operation, General Shepard, 
who's mm. played by Glenn Morshauer, who was Aaron Pierce on 24 for yeah. seven oh. seasons. There's yeah. a, another bad guy out there, and this guy is named Hassan, and, and Hassan has serious 24 uh, yeah. villain vibes. He, he wants revenge on America for killing his mentor boss, General Chabani. Um, yes, <laughs> Shabani. But, but he doesn't keep do calling with... him that every time because I find yeah, it no, funny. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. He, he doesn't do this with like the Iranian military, even though he is like in the military. He yeah. creates a terror cell called right. Al Kudo or yeah, 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 yeah. I believe Quaidu. Oh, the, yeah, there is that's Al Katala. That's the Al Katala. Like, yeah, but like that's, that's their was... like Al Qaeda thing. Yes, right? yes. Al Qaeda yeah. and the Iranian Revolutionary Guards get along very well. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, it's great. Famously, BFFs. So. famously, <laughs> BFFs, Yeah, yeah. So, so in in this case, the Quds Force is kind of like an international organization of evil bros, um, right? Who mm-hmm. are gonna go out and like harm the United States? The other thing about uh, Hassan that I, I like is that he's doing all of this shit, and he must have a pretty big budget to be doing all of this shit. He's a major, like that's not he's not that big of. <laughs> there yeah. are two dudes in the Iranian <laughs> army, like. <laughs> Well, it's like it's like in Stratego where the major is actually the most powerful player, yeah. the, the most powerful class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we 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 go then Ghost uh, and and Soap, the other main guy, uh, who who are both British, by the way. Uh, yes. Soap is yes. Soap Everyone's Scottish. British. They're all British. Yeah, um, no one's American. There are no Americans in this. <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 it's just the SAS, and the, yeah. the reason the reason why this is so is because they're part yeah. of a sort of like international organization of good bros, yes. uh, who who are mm. all like tier one operators. They're all epic guys, uh, and it's yeah. called Task Force One Four One, which is a direct sort of allusion to uh, a, the, the US. Rob. Well, the US invented this for real in Iraq, right? It was called Task Force Black. Before that, it was called like a bunch of numbers Task Force 20, okay, 145, okay. a bunch of these. And this was like a kill or capture task force. They're the guys who caught Saddam Hussein. But the idea was you're going to get all of our coolest guys and all of your coolest guys, and they're going to be besties. And it's going to be like an Anglo American bro off. They were um, like, have, did you see the Dirty Dozen? We're going to do that, but without the prison part. Yes, <laughs> yeah. But with Hopefully. about as many war crimes, allegedly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so they, they just sort of like fictionalized that. And then they kind of wrote all of the American characters out of it. And what they were yeah. left with was, was Brits. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, also the Phil thing- Graves. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Well, that's the thing is like, yeah, well, they lost Keith David. I guess that, that was part of it. But like there is there is just so little confidence that America has in its actors. It's like at any point, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. can we can we get an English? Can we yeah, please yeah, yeah, yeah. just get an English to do this for us? Yeah, it's like podcast guests. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost exclusively at this point. Oh, yeah. oh, no, I've thrown a stone in my glass house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the windows. Piercing my skin. <laughs> Can we get an English person from a minor public school to just like fill in for a bit? Yeah. So there, the like, yeah. There's like three or four main British guys. You have the 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 upper deckers who are American. There's mm-hmm. a there's a Russian guy who shows up at some point. Mm-hmm. Then you also have some Mexican special forces guys who are also right. in this unit. But yes. also they are yeah. linked to. Some kind of Blackwater esque group, but they don't really say so, or at least I didn't notice that they said so until you were in the cartel mansion thing. Yes, yes. That, which is immediately before Blackwater betray you and you fed up with this world. So, and, and we'll get we'll get to that in a little bit, yeah. just because I don't want to introduce too many guys. I know. Too quickly, I just but. I just want people to understand the experience of that. This is what it feels like playing the game. It yeah, does yeah, not yeah, establish yeah, 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 anything. That's not well. what it feels like playing yeah. this game. This game feels like being hit with a hammer. <laughs> yeah, repeatedly. Yeah, it, it's, it's like, it's like, it hurts yeah. the first time, and then you're just kind of woozy. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. And like th- things are happening, and you're not sure why. It, it feels like it feels like you've watched Syriana, and then someone has beat you over the head and asked you to recap the plot of Syriana <laughs> using <laughs> only the words "and then." Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> then, and then, and then. It's it's maddening. Yeah, because because we get into this situation right where Ghost and Soap have to go to El Mazra to take out Hassan. They try, they fail because yeah. he's already gone. Yeah. Um, but he's what we doing a Twitch stream. 
<laughs> yes. Hassan is. Yes. Yeah. Good one. He, he is Brian. actually doing a speech on a live stream that you just keep coming. You're like, oh, that's Hassan's true. in this room. Yeah, that's and right. It's that's just right. like a laptop where he's giving a speech where he's talking about, and we're going to invade America's borders. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> our heroes being confused by a sound coming out of a computer speaker being like oh it's got to be the real him oh computer again <laughs> that's also very 24 like i kept <laughs> thinking about how fucking 24 ass this thing is because you you'll get those moments all the time in 24 where really? it'll be like oh we're coming across the guy oh oh he got away <laughs> like it's, very, it's very common and it happens Such here a Tim too because robinson delivery Josh, i was gonna say that was yeah, well, the, really the tapping into too. my um <laughs> The, but but what we do learn here is that the Iranians have American missiles. Whoa! Curious. Whoa. I, I, wonder, I wonder where they got them. That's going to be oh. an important plot oh, point. Who, I bet. who could say? Um, we've yeah. also got this other. There's another lady. Her name is Laswell. She's like the cool girl. She's Laswell. like she's she's, like, she's the woman from boss. Zero Dark Thirty. Yes, they, yes. They like she looked at Zero Dark Thirty and they were like. A uh, CIA girl boss, give me one of those. And, and she's do. like, mm -hmm. she's she's basically, you know, she's got a lead, and now she's got to go back in the field for one more big score. Yeah, she so, kind of looks yeah. like Susan Cohen from Slings and Arrows. Yes, uh, <laughs> uh, but it is, it, it, yeah, she's second in command. She seems to be second in command to the general, right? To General yeah. Shepard. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's working with him in what is presumably God. the Pentagon. That would have been um, so much funnier if they had gotten Susan Coyne, though. Like yeah. her and Mark McKinney as the as the people leading this That unit. would be cool. <laughs> Unfortunately, what we get instead is we move on to Amsterdam, where oh, it's yes, two more do. new guys now. Uh, we've got Price and Gaz, yes. who are Gaz. also both British, right? They're every, yes, yeah, yeah, both British. Both British, both British. Gaz was also and another also NPC retired? they just had to give a name to. Yeah, the thing about yeah. being in the SAS is it's so cool that you don't have to like do any of the shit that you have to do in the regular army. And I guess that's kind of true. You can like grow your, you know, fucking moustache or whatever. But yeah, I yeah, think right. one thing that they usually want you to do is like not work flex time. Right, I think you usually have to like. <laughs> they have to know when you're showing up because, like, the vibe is very much like, "Oh, we're back out of retirement because uh, we felt like it, and now we just yeah. have access." We missed to our bros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just exactly. like, oh yeah, we have two retired guys who are in Amsterdam right now. I'll just call them up, and you're like, <laughs> "All right, it's time for me to go back in <laughs> killing people." That's what I do best. <laughs> you, That's you what like, I do best. I'm high off my gourd because I've lived in oh, Amsterdam. Yeah, say, right. so, you you know, hit Price's WhatsApp. He's like in. In a weed cafe, he's like <laughs> making friends with the bud tender. He's like, yeah, I guess I could fucking do some counterterrorism. <laughs> <laughs> he just stabs the guy he's smoking with and walks out of the shop. <laughs> so the thing is, like there, there, there are no there are no weed cafes in Amsterdam, right? Any of the culture yeah, yeah. that you think exists in Amsterdam, that's that's not there. What there is in no, Amsterdam, there is no culture in the Netherlands. No, mm. and that's true but, but, but for different reasons, right? What, what exists in Amsterdam are three things: boats, yes. Pretty buildings, yes. and the entire city being entirely under the control of Al Qaeda. That's right. That's right. Because when we arrive in Amsterdam, uh, we're out on the canals. I guess um, we're we're doing sort of like a discount splinter cell infiltration. Yes. Oh, bring stealth kind of thing. Cell back, you know, no justice. Yes, yeah. yes. Like, yes. But like they're doing a what? remake, and I'm like, no, give me, give me like a, a I mean, more remake, remake. Give me a new one. Uh, that's the weird thing about this game is that it wants to be a stealth game most of the time. Yes, mm. yes. and it's terrible mm. at it. It's and so if bad it was at willing it. to actually try to be a stealth game, it might be fun. Yeah. But it's constantly at war with itself because the Infinity Ward engine is not designed for stealth. The, 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 the thing is, the, like, the team who were meant to design any of the things that would have systematized the stealth instead developed the missile that you use once. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And they were like, oh no, we forgot to do the stealth. So this Amsterdam <laughs> Canal mission has you, as Gaz, swimming around between different boats with a silenced pistol, and, and you have knife. to keep in a knife, and you have to keep shooting guys and taking them out silently, and if you trigger anybody's alert, you're basically gonna be dead quickly until you dive yeah. back into the water, but 
Again, it's not like a true stealth game, so there's no like proper cooldown system. Yeah, the alert like doesn't that. go away. You can't ever. hide bodies. What, what, what there is, is is you sort of like you infiltrate Amsterdam's famous Al Qaeda district. Right. Yes. There's a bunch of like Al Qaeda guys walking around with AKs, just like open carrying, like they're in Arizona On the docks, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then if you like shoot anybody, that alerts everyone, and they attack you with the Al Qaeda patrol boat. Right, yeah. Just driving around. Yeah, can we just talk patrol, about the like, patrol boat for just one second? Because it is so derpy. They are driving <laughs> in the smallest circle imaginable that is already covered by people on the docks. Like, they're not like, in the parking lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just, whipping like, shitties. <laughs> and they look so silly on it because it's going so slow, but like the characters like aren't, don't look like they're on the boat. They're like, look like they're floating kind of above the boat. Yeah. It's. Oh, it's this so game silly. this game also does not let you have the catharsis of actually killing Dutchmen either because mm. all these guys <laughs> spoilers are speaking Spanish <laughs> right right all these Al Qaeda guys in That's Amsterdam so weird. yeah so, I, I mean the thing about Al, the Al Qaeda guys in Amsterdam right is that this <laughs> is it, one one hundred percent like a, a, a racist fascist thing but it's mm -hmm. it's become right. something that's been so laundered through yeah. Other action movies and like right wing news that this is, you know, ripping headlines and ripping concepts out of that the uh, like, I don't think that they thought of themselves as be like making any kind of a political point here. Yeah. They were just like, oh, sure. Uh, Oh, it's it's like you know, ex it's within the bounds of acceptability now to just yeah. say Amsterdam is mostly Al Qaeda guys. <laughs> if you don't like think of the sort of like the part of that that's variously either implicit or explicit in right wing uh, sources, which is because of mass migration by Muslims. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean right. this is this is just like Geert Wilders and his whole fucking you know no go zones and yes. all that. It, yeah. It's 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 exactly over, the same. Over there, they're called Vander Kaida. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, they're called <laughs> Nugusunes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's it, very it, hard to commit terrorist acts in clogs, is all I'll say. <laughs> you mean wooden oh, shoes? It's, so yeah, we found it's new hard camouflage to makeup. <laughs> Bit racialist, though. <laughs> it's like ghost Christmas time, ghost. <laughs> Supposed to be soot from a chimney. <laughs> I've got the fucking radio filter, I could be doing that. It's supposed to be soot from a chimney. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. The other thing that's so fucking annoying about this part in yeah. Amsterdam is that you are constantly being nagged to mm. do stuff. Yes. Like, so, you don't yeah. just get to walk around the docks and shoot the guys. You yeah. keep on beginning like, Hey guys, <laughs> you gotta go shoot those guys now. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, and if I you, know. But if you don't, do it in that order, you fail. And that's yes. a big yeah. recurring motif in this game, oh, is like, so if you irritating. don't do exactly what they say, exactly when they say it, the, the mission will just fail. And yes. it'll be yeah. like, oh, well, it took too long, sorry, start all over again. And again, that's to train you, right? That's mm -hmm. to train mm -hmm. the audience how to follow orders, because this thing is just fucking military propaganda. Like, every single thing is a command of you have to do this, because after we successfully get through uh, the part in the canals at night, it's now the next morning and we're out on yeah. the street of Amsterdam. And once again, we are given a series of commands that we have yeah. to obey yeah. because there's some sort of like a meetup going on. Yeah. And it's, it's, part, not, it's not really this, clear. Like, mm, yeah, point. no. Also, the, the other thing I want to dig into really quickly is calling oh, yeah. it military propaganda. Is it, It's true, but I think there's something interesting here where as the series has gone on, it's gotten less and less to do with anything the military does or even really anything like the CIA would do. And it's mm. become sort of more like banging G.I. Joe dolls together. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, like sure, a sure. Of it. Because like if you're if you're like an American teenager playing this, what are you what are you gonna get from this? I wanna like join the British army and to <laughs> hang out with these guys. Because there's a point where like one of our protagonists like chastises one of the guys in Blackwater for not being brave enough to be in the actual army. Right. And I'm just like, but you're not in the actual army either. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you barely have any relation to this. Uh, like, yeah. either in the stuff you do or like the, you know, the way that you look. Um, or yeah. Like, any of this. It, it's just sort of like this, uh, you know, you may as well functionally be a superhero. 
So we find ourselves in Amsterdam in broad daylight now, and this is correlative to no Russian, right? This is mission yeah. number yes. four, just as no Russian is mission number four in Modern Warfare 2, Das Original. Um, <laughs> yes. And it's a sharp pronunciation there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is them trying to do no Russian again, but without being quite as, I guess, offensive because they're pussies now. Yeah, there you, are civilians you, here, but you get a game over if you kill them. There is like yeah, a child yeah. and you can 360 no scope that child. <laughs> you do. Yeah. We, your only reward is a game over screen and a very funny video to upload to Twitter or YouTube. <laughs> yes. And they're like, yeah, you're not going to you're not going to be able to kill civilians here because this isn't Mexico and yeah, right. um, <laughs> or Al Masra. Th this whole mission is just you walk around the corner and do two commands and then walk back around the corner. You start in in the ooh in the red light district. Ooh ah ooh. ooh. There's a bunch of signs that just have like pictures of lips on them and nothing more provocative than that. Nope. Yeah, the uh, lips district. <laughs> it borders onto the Al Qaeda district. I mean, they made them like take all of the really horny shit down because of the Islamism. You know? well, I think I think the the implication here is, is that like so we found out that the cartel, the cartel, yeah, Los the Almas cartel, cartel singular yeah, um, cartel, the one, yeah, was who was in the uh, the docks. All the all the guys that we were killing were all uh, Mexican cartel members, and. This is, yeah, this is the cartel controlled and therefore Al Qaeda controlled part of Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the no go zone. Yep. That uh, uh, still a lot of people are going to. And you yeah. cross a bridge and your commander tells you to, uh, to stealth take down a guy and you stealth take down him by just standing in broad daylight and stabbing <laughs> him stabbing with him a knife. Stabbing him in the gut! Yeah! Just you stab him up. once in the stomach and he immediately dies and you just sort of gently cradle him and drop him down onto a bench. No one notices. He and you go into an alleyway and drop a grenade him, in a dumpster. No, nothing! Nothing! He doesn't even make a sound! It's absurd! <laughs> you know how many, how, do you know how many times you have to stab oh. a guy before he stops yelling? Especially the stomach. so frustrating. I've, I've, I've stopped doing it, but like back in my day, <laughs> my college days, you know, you know how the it was. The canals of Amp Sir Tam, yeah, yeah, yeah. red with the blood of Brian's victims. <laughs> no, I mean it's it's so funny though. That guy has one hit point. You you like <laughs> yeah, stab yeah, yeah, him yeah, one yeah. time, he just goes. <laughs> well, it is funny because right before you approach him, he's having a conversation with another cartel bodyguard. He's just like, listen, I have stage four cancer. I don't have <laughs> much longer to live. Honestly, a strong breeze at this point. I'll just keel over. <laughs> so he dies of the shock uh, before mm. you even stab him. It's not even the stab. <laughs> yeah. he, just, he just expires. It really, it's, it's yeah, a wild like a deer that gets caught in the city. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a wild thing because. This doesn't need to be gameplay. I mean, I guess in a no, way no. it makes it more, you, you become a bit more connected to the narrative due to the fact that you're actually like doing it, like you actually stab the guy. Oh, and then some other guys run in and you just have to pull out your gun and start blasting. Yeah. yeah. It's really funny because like you have to create a distraction by dropping a grenade in a dumpster. And I don't know about, yes. about the rest of you, but for me on PlayStation 4, that grenade makes no sound. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't remember. Honestly. I did it more than once. It's just like I dropped it in, and then the guys show up in the alley, and I start shooting people. But the the grenade, like, just no sound comes oh, the, out. The SA spent like a hundred million dollars on extra special grenades that don't make noise. They're silent. It's the, it's yeah, the world's silent quietest grenade. My, my false flag grenade. Damn it! It's silent. <laughs> and and when when the shooting starts, when uh, shit gets kinetic in the middle of yes. like the yeah. lips district of Amsterdam, no yes. one no one at all seems really concerned like the civilians running around and like if you shoot one yeah. of them by accident you get a game over but the, nobody's like oh the Dutch cops are gonna show up <laughs> or whatever Yeah, they're, they're well, just like this is normal to us well you'd hear them coming from a mile off you know the Dutch cops because they're forced <laughs> yeah, to work yeah, along yeah, yeah. All, all, of the, all of the Sharia cops would come mm. out of the canals of course mm, the thing yes. is the Dutch cops don't show up because they're too busy like asking each other each other's pronouns Oh, oh, that's it. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And th that makes sense. Yeah, can't uh, respond to the Al Qaeda guys because we're doing diversity training for the like 18th <laughs> day of this month. 
Alice, when did you start writing for the Babylon Bee? <laughs> <laughs> when I got much less funny. Like, yeah, I, I, here's the thing. It would be funny if it wasn't so dang true. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the thing about comedy is sometimes it hits the hardest when it's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just I think there was a lot of like talk when this game came out about the Amsterdam level in particular because mm. of the way the yeah. NPCs like navigate the space and how <laughs> uncanny and like ghoulish it feels Mm -hmm. because so many of them appear to just be like like husks like these corpses shuffling about their day there's no real life or personality in these npcs and of course there isn't because there isn't life or personality in this game really i thought you were gonna say in the dutch oh yeah (laughs) it's it's also sort of like they've they have inadvertently given you operator vision by removing your ability to empathize with these people because you're like oh Mm -hmm. these are civilians they're not people if they were people they would be cool like me and they would be wearing the like infrared patches yeah. and the, like tactical clothing right right right. but yeah i'm surprised this section got any attention at all because it's it's over it's one and done yeah. it's just yeah. like it's okay here we go next chapter it's not controversial at all in the way that no russian is it's uh, it's yeah. counterpart it's just it it's just kind of there but the thing that we do need to do uh once we have concluded amsterdam is we need to go to the united states mexico border uh, yes, we do. Because... Yes, we do. I could talk for an hour and a half about this mission because... <laughs> yes. Let's go. Have Have you seen the movie Sicario? Uh, interesting, interesting sort of like uh, fever dream. Um, yeah. Mm. People, it, people generally like the first Sicario. I like, you know? I, I like the movie. Yeah. I like the movie. But the point of Sicario is essentially like, oh, to, you know, uh, to do the border stuff, the cartel stuff is tremendously dehumanizing, and in order to do it successfully you need to be a fascist, and that's bad, and that's who we've Mm -hmm. given all of the power to to do it. Um, Mm. And then they made Sicario 2, Soldado. Same screenwriter. Yeah, and the point of Sicario 2, Soldado, is uh, to do the cartel stuff, to do the border stuff, requires you to be a fascist, and that's good. Mm. Because of (laughs) posts that, like, did the rounds as, like, you know, email forwards, you know, stuff yeah. that like, you know, QAnon people were sharing. The vibe of which was um, the, the border guard found prayer mats at the border, which means that Al Qaeda are like teaming up with the cartels to smuggle themselves into the uh, United okay. States to do yep. terrorism. And this is, this is a peculiarly sort of like, florid imagination thing that happens occasionally like uh, you know e- even intelligence officers aren't immune to it for a while there was a thing in britain that like what if the gang members started converting to islam and they used the guns that they would have from gang membership to do islamic terrorism which yeah i mean wh- what if yeah did, it- did not really pan out um yeah. but what, what if is- what if the first act of the kevin costner robin hood happens but today yeah, like and it, it, it's 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 sort of like this thing where like wrestling, where like oh, the only way that the heels can get ahead is like with an unfair team up. Whether that's you know a, a historically <laughs> accurate one like Russia and Iran, yeah. or uh, a somewhat less plausible one like Al Qaeda and Iran, or uh, it's Al Qaeda and Iran and the cartel. And, and no, and and then it's and then you know the, if the ending of this game is anything to go off of, now the Russians are also going to get involved. Like it is yes, like yeah. it's trying to equate all of these different organizations and group them into one larger group evil, right? The, right. Oh, almost like maybe sort of an axis <laughs> of <laughs> evil. Because because if they just fought on their own in a stand up fight, America would destroy them easily. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was so powerful. We're like Goku for countries. <laughs> it just gets so big and so yeah, round. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you think that we can't handle one more enemy, but you know what? I think we can. I think you we always can. can. Always can. Always can. Always can. Always can. Always can. Oh, my border is to too porous. It. There's just too many immigrants getting into my belly. <laughs> oh no, I don't like this. <laughs> I oh, I hate this. Uh, the, the, yeah, the, Goku's it, wall is very easily scalable. Is what I will say. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're scaling my wall. Oh God! <laughs> but this, this movie, this this game, this game is progressive in two senses. One, yes. mm. it uh, shows that the border wall is a joke and right. does not yes. prevent anyone from crossing the border. But second of all, 
You remember I mentioned the International Organization of Bros, right? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, it's sort of like you, you, you're a yeah, you're a real country when you can get into IOB. So you got America, <laughs> you got Britain, you got Australia. Sometimes uh, mm -hmm. in like early Call of Duties, there's like a stray Russian guy running around from when mm. America was sort of like Sundere about them and was like oh, Russians. <laughs> you know, they, they they know how to be real men, but you know, yeah, not in a way that we always like. Just sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But this time, this time they do some progressivism because they announce with much fanfare. Mexicans can be in yes, the bros now. That's right. That's right. That's legal we have now. Two, we have two Mexicans who are members of the bro squad. We've got Alejandro and Rodolfo. And but again, yes. these guys are like regular army. They're like or they're like already part of the Mexican military, but then right? also part of this elite international unit. They're doing two jobs. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And one they of are, them gets character development. They're Mexican <laughs> special forces, and their mission is is to hunt down Hassan, our previously mentioned villain. Yes. <laughs> he is, I guess, trying to cross the Rio Grande along with a bunch of migrants? Yeah, well, he, he needs to make his way into California so he can buy a $7 million house or whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, from of course. His, his Twitch um, I, can can so, I just uh, identify how badly the Mexican army has fucked up here? Given how <laughs> much of Mexico there is, yes. that he has arrived in Mexico and is instantly over the border. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Well, really it, drop the ball. What happens is we we get this really fucking wild scene and I think it's actually visually maybe the most interesting part of the mm. game. It's very cinematic mm -hmm. where we see all of these migrants who are like in the river and they're like crossing over and and you're like, "Oh, they're they're you know, we we can't we got to be careful not to shoot any of these uh, innocent civilians because terrorists uh, there might be terrorists in there, but you can't think that they're all terrorists because, you know, the terrorists are going to be taking yeah. advantage of these good, innocent people who are just trying to cross the border. It's yeah. in centrism. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it wants it wants both things. It wants the migrant caravans to be real, like the invading right. forces to be real. But also we shouldn't kill them. And that's sort of their their attitude towards these things is it's it, it's in there. So it's topical. And now we move past it and it's just done. So it's, it's interesting because like this whole idea of, you know, the the Muslim terrorists are coming over the, the Mexican border because they look so much like Mexicans thing <laughs> has been around for a long time. But it was hmm. very niche during the Bush years. Yeah. I remember going and, and visiting a, a relative of mine who just who recently passed away, who was like this brilliant mathematician mm. who used to work for NASA. And he he came up with all sorts of like really important equations that he said God gave to him in a dream once that I guess are really foundational to a lot of NASA stuff. And Holy I shit. remember visiting with him and the conversation just very suddenly turned to the border. And he said a lot of the standard right wing stuff. And he's like, but then, you know, people like, uh, you know, Al Qaeda or whatever. They could cross the border, too. It's just that easy. Mm. And they don't really look any different. Uh, this was like 2005. And so it's, oh you know, it's kind really of fun to see this, this genius mathematician's genius ideas really pick <laughs> up, you know, yeah. 15 years later. Those ideas about uh, border security, also from God, interestingly yeah. enough. Uh, yeah. Every mathematician is insane, by the way, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the Sopranos episode, sort of post 9-11 where Al Qaeda tries to get the mob to help them do terrorism, and Tony <laughs> patriotically turns them into the FBI. Oh, oh hell yeah. my god, I do remember that. Oh, I, I'm still making I, my way through The Sopranos right now, so I haven't gotten to this. Sorry for yet. spoiling it, but 9/11 does happen in The Sopranos <laughs> timeline. Um, but yeah. but so I, I'm I'm curious at the idea that like that kind of self-preservation instinct, where it's like I'm okay with the like anti-mafia guys, I don't want yeah. to get like zero dark thirty over this. That can prevail in like, you know, Rhode Island or like New Jersey crime families, but mm. not in the cartels, because the cartels don't, you know, they, they don't have a sort of like sense of autonomy like that. Well, no. the cartels no. are, 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 they are uh, just fundamentally opposed to America. Right, oh, like that's okay, that, yeah. that's They're not that's businesses. what this all. They like, that's yeah. what this all comes down to is mm. that the thing that unifies all of these different groups in the ideological imagination of Call of Duty is their opposition to the United States, and not just the government of the United States, but the United States as an idea. 
Yeah, um, yeah. They, which, hate the, they hate us for our freedoms. Right. I mean, this is this is one of my one of the best things you can do as a business owner is to like despise your only customers, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's also that they only rule by violence and mm-hmm. with mm. uh, like a stern hand, which is very antithetical actually to what this task force is presented as in the game which is like people want to do things because they're a brotherhood you know the tagline for this game i think is the strongest weapon is team which is is truly one of the most baffling (laughs) sentences i've ever uh read and i think i think it's just very interesting that the way they frame it is just like the cartel they're they're not in it for brotherhood they're not in it for valor they're not in it for each other right it's not there's no team in the cartel right it is they're not even in it for profit they're strictly (laughs) in it for ideology yeah Yeah. they're just like killing people yeah Yeah. if you ever see like cartel instagrams uh or or things of this nature one mm-hmm. thing I will say, okay, they do love killing people, but you know what else they love is their bros. Like, yeah. those sure. are some of the yeah. most broed up guys I've ever seen in my life. So I do want to talk about what actually happens yeah. in this level, in Borderline. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. Me- the Mexican Once- army invades the United States. Yes! yes. They, 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 you, they, they, you, the protagonist, as Mexican special forces, cross over into the U.S. You and start- scale <laughs> Trump's border wall. And... Yeah. You get to it's over to the other side. to get revenge for the Ninos Eros. Like, there's, this, <laughs> there's this big water tower that says, welcome to the Lone Star State on it, yeah. just in case you missed that. We're in Texas now. Yeah. And um, you have to walk through different people's houses. And this is one of the best. And by best, I mean, most wild moments of the yeah. entire game, because Correct. as you go through this level, You will at different points come across different civilians and Mm -hmm. you need to pacify these civilians so that they don't, you know, call the cops or shoot you or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so you get a prompt up on screen, press right mouse button to pacify civilians or on console, press L2 to de-escalate specifically. You might wonder, what does de-escalation look like when you press that button? Well, you unholster your weapon and point it in their fucking face. <laughs> yes, that a uh, classic de-escalation move. Of course, is to pull course. out your weapon. <laughs> and like, especially in Texas. Yeah, and, and yeah. You, like, yeah. you, you, you in go through someone's house. You go through all of these houses, like trying not to get castle doctrined. And in the course of like so doing, you announce yourself. You're like de-escalating these people by being like, "It's fine." We're with the like Mexican special forces. That doesn't raise any questions. None. No one's like, Not- oh well, when you put it that way, <laughs> that, that's that's worse, right? You realize wow, that's worse. Yeah, we're it's like you've, Texas. You've crossed the border. You are in El Paso, right? And yeah. um, if you're right next to the border in El Paso and you're walking through all these houses, everyone is speaking English in this game, which would yeah. not be no, the, the case in the story. I also like the subtitles here. I don't know if you all had subtitles on, but mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. the first people you hear talking as you're walking past a trailer are simply labeled trailer female and trailer male. <laughs> yeah. The two yeah. genders. The two yeah. genders, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, so something, something ha- else happens, which is y- you get stopped by the cops at long last. Yes. And yes. Yeah, it, it takes a couple of interesting positions here. First of which is that if you are stopped by the cops and you are the Mexican military and you are heavily armed and you've been like breaking through people's houses and stuff, mm-hmm. if you just like walk over and talk to them slowly with your hands up, you're yeah. fine. They're, they're yeah, they're definitely not going to shoot first yeah. and ask questions later. Not the yeah, cops. It, it, like, not a, sort of a, like an El Paso like cop is going to go, oh, you're part of the international organization of bros. And so like on a friendship <laughs> basis, you outrank me. <laughs> yeah. And, and like th- there's something very interesting here, though, which is um, right. that there was there was a, a canceled Rainbow Six game that they did like one uh, sort of like trailer for. And everyone mm. remembers it for like press circle to hug wife, right? It was called Rainbow <laughs> Six Patriots. Um, but the, the part that I remember from it is uh, a, a guy is being like unwillingly used as a bomb courier. He's like driving mm. a bomb onto the Brooklyn Bridge. And okay, Team okay. Team Rainbow, the international organization of bros, the like tier one operator guys, see mm-hmm. the NYPD trying to stop him. And they go, oh, we can't let them do that, so we have to shoot the cops (laughs) non-lethally. We have to, like, shoot them in the legs so that they'll stop doing cop shit. And it's always fascinated me, this idea that, like, 
yes, the American police officer occupies this like exalted sort of super citizen position, right? Mm -hmm. Where the, the thin blue line against you know, you know between order and chaos until right. the exact second that a special forces guy shows up, and then they're dog shit. Then yeah, 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 they yeah. can yes. get killed like instantly because a more effective badass has arrived on the scene. And you know, mm -hmm. we found someone. We found our new dads. You know, we found someone cooler to to look up to. And so, what yeah, happens yeah. with these cops is they instantly get killed. And it the the, right. the game doesn't yeah. give a shit. It's not like no, a, they get this murked. is a solemn it, officer down moment. No, a guy yeah, shoots yeah, yeah, them yeah. with an RPG, yeah, and you're like, oh it's, fuck. <laughs> it's also worth noting in this in this game in uh, Modern Warfare Two, the squeak wall or the squeak make. Mm. Um, <laughs> they. You have also just <gasps> killed a civilian. You were in someone's house and yeah. they had the, you know, you de-escalated them by putting your gun in their face and then the guy pulled a gun out so you shot him. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And and you are you are covered in his blood when the police show up yeah. and then get luckily rocket launchered I'm, I'm by just, somebody. I'm just yes. thinking about what the response would be if a member of the cartels trademark <laughs> working with Iran Killed like four El Paso cops with a rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think that would play on the uh, news? America would go to war with Mexico immediately. Like there'd and be, Iran. Oh yeah, it would be 1846 <laughs> all over again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but I think this is actually very important to point out is that the civilian that you kill is uh, not white. Mm, yes. Right. Every house mm -hmm. that you break into with a white person, you are not allowed to kill them. Right. But the minute there is a brown person that you encounter, you shoot them dead because they pull a gun on you. Yeah, but you're Mexican, though. Yeah, I was say, are, oh, you no, no, no. are you saying the Mexican yes. army is racist? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just making no inquiries about the train Maya. Like, <laughs> right. But it is a, it is a motif that happens a lot yeah. in this game, which is even when there are white antagonists, uh -huh. we don't see them die. We don't mm -hmm. relish in their deaths. It is only the villains of color yep. that we see or the get civilians. murdered. Or the civilians of color yep. that we see massacred in any real way. In a yep. way that's actually supposed to make you as a player have that dopamine rush, right? Mm. Because of the thrill of that kill. Absolutely. I hate this game. I hate this <laughs> game more than anything that we've played for this podcast. It is <laughs> it is so insidious in its mm -hmm. attempts yeah. to like steer your brain towards mm -hmm. its way of thinking. And it's so manipulative in that fact. You'd be dead. If you approach a fucking police officer, they would shoot you fucking dead in the street. And the fact that this game, even for a moment, entertains the fact that that's it's not true. Ah, uh, I mean, oh. the cool thing is that this is mostly consumed by children. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the best part. I that's agree. That's my it's favorite good. part. I like it. And uh, hey, you know, if 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 you've been having fun so far, <laughs> just wait until you hear about what happens next because we're about to do some drone warfare. <laughs> I mean, technically, <laughs> te technically, like this is not actually a drone mission that 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 happens next, but. I, there's really yeah. two pieces here. First piece, Hassan got away again. Oh, no, we got to go get him. Um, and so we go to Mexico. Soap and Ghost go to Mexico. Yeah, we go to the city of Las Almas. Las Almas. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, go, we go to the favelas of Las Almas. <laughs> and, like, oh, okay, uh, they still have some assets from the Brazil <laughs> stuff. And, yeah. and, and they're fucking driving around. D d and, and Ghost is wearing again the full skull mask it's, and cape, just in a it, car with like uh, three normal guys. He's got a lot of makeup around the eyes. It's, yeah, too, it's worth like, noting yes. too. Yeah, he's done the Christian Bale Batman. eye makeup thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. he's he's got a in an, a full Al Jolson under there. <laughs> <laughs> a so full Dutch that's Christmas. why they don't let you yeah. see it when he's he singing takes the to, mask to, to off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a the, the thing that's kind of interesting about the way they frame this up is that once again, it's the binary of like the, you know, Rodolfo and mm -hmm. Alejandro. They're like good guys who really love their country, man. Yeah. And like, you know, if you really love your country, then you're going to be opposed to all this bad, like corruption and shit like that. Yeah. And, you know, all of the uh, cops are being paid off and, and a lot of the military are being paid off by these cartel yep. guys and oh no so we, yeah, they we make when the cartel to... leader is El Sinombre yes <laughs> El Sinombre oh, oh no oh, this, oh, is, oh, this is like insane I mean you can practically like hear the sort of like flamenco guitar being played <laughs> after it truly like, but 
yeah, they do it's, make it's a genuinely, point. It reminds me of the bit in fucking Clear and Present Danger where they have not Pablo Escobar just say, oh, Yes! Oh, si, senor. This guy is Mexican? <laughs> yeah, and most but, of these people, ju- like most of the people you encounter in the game, just say like the canned lines from Resident Evil Four. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all Matalo and they Cabron. It's they like, <laughs> yeah, but, but they do, they really do make a point to differentiate that Las Almas is not the rest of Mexico. Yeah, right, it's like a right, weird right. territorial this is cartel not state. Mexico. This yeah, is yeah, Los yeah, Almas. Yeah, yeah. I want to be very clear to anyone in Mexico who may want to play this game. This right. is not Mexico. Yep. yep, 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 yep. Because what they what they're able to do here is yeah, they're able to create this sort of imaginary world that bears very little resemblance to the real thing. So they get mm-hmm. the benefit of the setting without the real world implications of the setting, which they also do with Amsterdam. To be fair. But hmm. for some reason, yeah. in Amst- the difference in Amst- is it, the difference yeah. is there isn't a huge market of Dutch American teenagers waiting <laughs> right. to play this game. Yeah, I mean there was yeah. like it was it was me at one point in time, but that was about yes. it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, we find fucking uh, Hassan eventually. Yeah, Hassan is back in Mexico. He's, He's just in- sort of hopping back and forth across He's the border every day. Yeah, we've got like another, they all do. We've got another sort of twenty four moment here where he like knocks our hero down on the ground but then you know no man is left behind so our man gets taken out from this burning building and blah 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 yeah. blah uh, we end up destroying a bridge like critical yes. Mexican infrastructure we yes. just do that we just blow it all the way the fuck mm-hmm. up now we are on to like I said the drone warfare piece of this where <laughs> yes, first boy. of all we meet the very cool new shadow company and this Ooh, is led by a guy who is definitely not Eric Prince yeah. but boy howdy does he look like <laughs> they, Eric they, Prince they, they, they get his ass with the name though Philip yeah. Graves yeah mm, F- Philip yeah. Graves Phil Up Graves yeah, uh-huh. yeah oh, really makes you think they call oh, it they call it out that. too they they yeah. do call it out they say ah oh, Phil Graves that's funny and I'm like I know I got it I got it for when you said Phil I Graves. I didn't get it. You thought oh, about yeah, the it's, it's, it's similar to the, the phrase Phil Graves. It's a homophone. <laughs> I deal with enough homophones in my life. Oh. Oh. So what we get here is back-to-back missions where yeah. you are in a bomber, I guess. And it's an AC-130 are- gunship, and they do this because they like... Oh. I'm not sure it is an AC-130, but they had an AC-130 in the original Modern Warfare and they tried to do a bit of social commentary where you okay. would like you would removed from the gunfight and you would like operate right. the guns on this gunship and you would like hear the like operators being you know like laughing in like an office environment and it was like damn society and right. yes. I will yeah, give we it live the credit. Those, yeah, yeah. In the, like in the original one, it was maybe trying to make a point about how like damn that warfare sure do be modern though. In right, that they right. are like very divorced right. from it, but like. People found it to be the most fun part of that game, so now yeah. all of the games yeah. in the series have to have one. And in this game, you don't get one, you get two. There yes. are back-to-back yes. missions here where you sit up in this bomber, and you're basically piloting a drone here. Like, this is an kind ad of, yeah. for being in the Air Force. Yes. Uh, because- My note here was, I'm pointing at stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but you're, again, like... Th- Despite being military propaganda, it's not the military. They're just some guys. They're just they're Blackwater yeah. or whatever. They're like yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a private military company, which the game thinks is bad but also cool. Yeah. So yeah. you're you're you basically like you just have to click on. It needs guys. reform. It needs <laughs> reform. <laughs> the PMCs need reform. Mm-hmm. You, you, yeah. You, you just, click on guys. You get you get this message is like oh here come guys up to the to the school. Okay, and then you got to click on the guys by the school. But it's it's also it's so long. This section goes so so really on long. and on and on, and it's just I understand that it is there to be like an advertisement for like you know joining the air force or like how cool it would be to pilot a drone or whatever. But like I feel like yeah, I feel like part fun. of it is like this is how infrared works, right? Like yeah. here here's some of the you get this a lot more. I feel with the older Call of Duty, like like Call of Duty Modern Warfare or two. Um, where it's like, no, that one's not funny. Okay, that's fine. Um, where it's like, here's 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 a flood of operator lingo. Here's you know the tag. Here's what this cool shit looks like. And this this level feels like it's doing that. It's like, see, yeah. greenhouses are different under infrared scopes, the right? Because it reflects the light. The, the operator lingo is always interesting to me because what they do with any of these games is they hire to like, I don't know. 
ex Epic operator uh-huh. guys. Uh, yeah. And just just to hang out with them and be friends with them and be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'd do that. No, I wouldn't do that. Um, oh, but yeah, every- so cool, Eddie Gallagher. Thanks. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> ben Robert Smith or whatever. Um, yeah. And and so they, they they talk to them and then they pick up like one or two things that they say or like say they would say and then use them to death. And they're always yeah. like you, that, that kind of like uniquely unpleasant kind of like military language. So like, and and like one of the other modern warfare's, everyone was saying that they were like Oscar Mike all the time, a thing which yeah. he, like one guy maybe said once. This time, they, they refer to shooting people as dumping an alarming amount. Like yeah. the number the number of times that like Captain Price with the mustache will point you at a dude and say dump him is in- interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. But the, of- the one that reminded me specifically was uh, this is real and uh, reprehensible. Uh, they refer to, as is as I understand it, common people fleeing from a drone strike from a building as squirters. And I'm like, mm. yeah, yeah. Wow, that's horrible. Thanks. It, it is worth noting that there are actually three calibers of weapon that you can select from. You've got like a, yeah. a, a mm-hmm. sort of a minigun. You've got like a, a moderate size shell and then you've got like a missile and yeah. there are different points at which you need to use these things again just kind of giving you but but it's not really fun from a gameplay yeah. perspective no. like it's not no. giving you interesting variety in gameplay it's just giving you different ways to kill guys because we are having warfare and we are doing it modernly yeah. i gotta say this section uh performs horribly on ps4 Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. The because you're zooming in and zooming out the whole time, oh, the sure. pop in of the textures, like you'll you'll just see every object grow polygons very slowly <laughs> every time <laughs> that you it's zoom in. Like, it's great. It's a remarkably poorly optimized game in general. Uh, oh, it's so okay. like on PC, it's terrible. Oh, across the board, not just because I'm last well, gen. Uh, P- yeah. PS5 for the most part runs really really well. There is one section, the the final mission is yeah. Oh, we'll the, talk the, about the, that. the second last mission is just unfinished. Uh, mm. They did not. Yep. They they just put the sun underground. But yeah, for the most part on PS5, it seems like it was optimized specifically for console for mm. the newest generation. That's what mm. it was built for. Yeah, so anything sense. that's not that, it it, it feels really sputtery. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The PC version sucks, but you know that that's generally the case with PC ports. Unless sure. like it's a PC first thing, it's gonna be bad. Yeah, I'm surprised um, this isn't PC first. That's not their their way of designing Call of Duty games. No, 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 it's just no, it's, it's, it's like, like all of the sort of like the the tactile nature of it as well as designed for like game pads. Uh, yeah. playing it with okay. the, like playing okay. it with a mouse and keyboard actually makes it too easy in a lot of it, ways. It really you can, does. Like, yeah. switch over to stuff. Yeah. Especially yeah, okay. in the convoy mission, which we'll talk about later. The other sort of big mission that I wanted to talk about here before we get into our break is uh, recon by fire. Uh, mm-hmm. Where you oh, put sure. on ghillie suits and start sniping guys. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like playing the hits. It's because they had yeah. a mission with ghillie suits and Modern mm-hmm. Warfare 1 one and they're like oh, we can do that again in, in and in, in in Modern Warfare 2 the first one it's not really a ghillie suit thing but you're doing things that were scripted out in the original Modern Warfare 2 where it's like there's two guys you aim for the one on the left. I'll shoot the one on the right. The only yeah. thing that they took out was that you're, you you used to kill a bunch of dogs in that mission. Um, Whoa. Uh, but yeah, you're in Spain because, you know, Spain is where like the original Mexicans are from. Uh, the European <laughs> Mexicans. <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> Resident Evil 4 is like happening over the horizon. You can just kind of like hear in the distance. <laughs> but really, like it is, it's like, why are we in Spain? You're, you're well, doing how, some what, sniping what? and like... Uh, yeah. find also out that- controlled by Al Qaeda, you see. Oh, yeah, it, it okay, also it. appears to be the Edinburgh uh, part of Spain uh, for the <laughs> yes. for, for the first half of it. You're just well, this, I, you this know is the what one I was the thinking. Game that doesn't look like Southern California. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah, I yeah. just I just thought really honestly, really truly, I think the developers had been playing some Hitman. I think that mm. they really <laughs> fell in love with the level design of Sapienza specifically. Oh, and then what they did was they went ahead and they did they were like. How could we make Sapienza from Hitman, but in this game? Because we'll, we'll take th- the windmills from Whittleton Creek. Yeah, because there we go. There's also this whole part where you have to snipe guys, and it's like yeah. a really shitty version of the sniper assassin gameplay mode from Hitman. It's yeah, like yeah. take everything that makes sniper assassin fun, like your ability to do it in the way that you want, and mm-hmm. you know the different ways that you can play Shooting with the environment. Puzzles, yeah. Get rid of all of that and make it just be that you are being told who to shoot, when to shoot, and how to shoot. 
Yeah. And uh, one that's, at a time. That's oh, one, it one at a time. And it tells you specifically like how many notches that you yep. have to do to do it. Yeah. And can I, if I can brag just for one minute, this is mm. the one trophy I got in the entire game, which is I did not sound the alarm uh, while oh. I went throughout the entire mission. And it's mm, nice. literally the one time I was good at this game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also a really important point in, in here. I mean, it's really important. This is actually key to the whole thing, mm -hmm. uh, much like Jar Jar. And uh, you find out that the lady commander, she's a lesbian. Really? She I has missed a that. wife. I missed Did, this completely, yeah. Wait, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, does, is this like optional? Yeah, it's so a dialogue there, there tree. There's a, a line yeah. of dialogue huh. that comes up where we talk about cigarettes and uh, how we like smoking. And she's like, oh, yeah, I used to be a big smoker. My wife doesn't like it, though. Inclusion. Mm. Oh, yeah. Hey. So uh, they've gone woke. Uh, yeah, so we're uh -huh. gonna boycott. Yeah, and make them go broke. <laughs> I can't believe that they introduced dialogue trees into this game. Like, yeah, yeah it is just it one is time, half, like yeah. halfway through. It's like all of a sudden it's Firewatch. The, <laughs> the, the, the team, the team, like the, did that, did that instead of doing any of like the stealth systems. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We had to implement the dialogue tree because the dialogue tree does become important in the final mission. Yeah. arbitrarily again so they have to introduce it beforehand right but it is it's it's just so clearly that they made the level too big in order to like mm -hmm. make it realistic so they mm -hmm. had to fill that gap with something and they might as well like have the player be vaguely involved as you're yeah. crawling slowly through the <laughs> underbrush <laughs> yeah Fuck, and so bad. and once we get to the end of this level after we've successfully like sniped all the guys and infiltrated the the building and shit like that yeah. we get to the under there's this underground lair which i cannot emphasize strongly enough is just the underground lab from sapienza yeah um, it's a big it, tunnel that leads you back outside to yep. a, a facility that you didn't need to go into a tunnel for <laughs> uh -huh. yeah but because it's not like hitman there's no why, other way in right yeah. yeah and you can kind of like ask why this exists and then price will like get on your radio and be like uh oh, sakai i was so fucking good at tunnels <laughs> what they what? love their tunnels yeah <laughs> the yeah, they're, they're only comfortable dig. yeah it's like it's a sensory thing they really like to feel uh, <laughs> no no the entire the cartel walls. watch Gurren Lagann and they're just like <laughs> I have to get underground uh, this is also where you find out that like there's a bunch of shit that got here from the Russians oh, oh, oh is it Russian missiles no oh, it's Russian guidance systems oh, okay cool thanks oh. <laughs> basically at this yep. point uh, oh. Laswell the, the aforementioned cool girl lesbian yeah um, boss, she yeah. drives a ford that's how you should know that she's <laughs> gay whoa uh she's built <laughs> huge, <Ford> huge, <laughs> huge world spanning historical l for subaru there <laughs> yeah, i know <laughs> laswell gets taken awesome. hostage she's out on a boat like providing overwatch support but she ends up getting yeah. uh like a boat pulls up and they take her on the boat and oh no now we gotta <laughs> rescue our Girl boss lady, we got to mm. go to the very real place of uh, Urzik stand to take care of it. Setting of the previous Modern Warfare 1, 2. I just wanted to note how interesting it is that everything in the global north in this game is in a real place, whereas everything in the global south is completely imaginary. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I just... I don't know what that's all about. I just oh, think it's I, interesting. Oh, I do. It's so, racism. Well, so, so, so Urzik stand is interesting is it, because I mean, the, the, the plot of the first Modern Warfare of the reboots was we got to fucking arm and train the Syrian rebels uh, because oh. they're rebelling against the Russians who are occupying Uzbekistan, uh -huh. bracket Syria, uh, and are being led by uh, this woman who is like not explicitly a Muslim, but is kind of a hijabi and who like is like mm. fighting the Russians, having survived war crimes, which you play through. It's uh, it's a weird game. It has some politics happening to it. Um, <laughs> a lot of politics happening at once. Yeah, and they just Great sort of abandoned energy. it after after America decided it was gonna like stay out of Syria. And so mm. what they're left with is like the insurgency continues forever, and this woman okay. Farah is like still leading it. Right. They've forever. created an insurgency, and there's a power vacuum. Uh, yeah. Nothing bad will happen there. She, but here's I, the thing: she, ladies can be bros too. She's in the yeah, international yeah, yeah, organization yeah, yeah. of yes, bros. She, sure she gets the nod from Price as soon as she shows up, where she, where he's like, "All right," and she's like, "Yeah." It, it is just strange, though, to me, and I agree, AJ, that a lot of it is just racism. Um, but like, why not just call it Syria? 
Genuinely, like why? Why not just you refer to the end? But like uh, Bashar al-Assad, like well, is that is that the but like is that really? Are is it concerns about? I mean, maybe yeah. it's the U.S. Like, military, we, right? Maybe it's the military saying you can't actually call it the UAE. That's plausible because yeah. you know the UAE is a real place, and we don't want to be seen as Jones and yeah, for I mean, war yeah, it's like it's weird because yeah. it's like yeah, Provoking Russia is a real place. We weren't in the situation that we are now with Russia when this game came out. Right. Like and what's surprising to me too is about the the angle with Mexico and like Mexico's a real place, Las Almas is not, is that they didn't somehow incorporate China into this or like yeah. fake I'm China. I'm amazed by that's that next too. game. Yeah. That's the next yeah, game. It's bewildering to me that's because it's just like, like ne- yeah, next game they do a thing about the fentanyl. Russians, I'm sure, but like, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, we'll, we'll do a stop in Shanghai, I'm sure. And maybe we'll, maybe we'll get North Korea in there for good measure. Who knows? Right. Well, Anyway, we will we'll continue our exciting exploration of all things Modern Warfare 2, the search for Curly's gold. In, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, right after this, we're going to we're going to uh, we have a very, let's see who is our sponsor for this. Week? Oh, yeah, who is our sponsor, AJ? Oh, my God. It's <laughs> ghost. Oh, no. <laughs> Oi, listeners, it's me, Ghost. Commanding officer of Task Force 141, an employee of the month of the Newark Spirit Halloween, six years running. I'll see you, Stuart, trying to take my employee of the month spot. I will bury you so deep in the desert, no one will ever find you. I am the party boy. No one is party better than me. Men, it's time to face facts. Men's faces, nobody likes them. Too many holes. So why not cover yours up with the only makeup that's built for men, bar men, for men, to men, with men, from men, atop men, 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 men. Introducing Eagle McGee's Male Murder Cream. The only skin enhancer tough enough for a man and tactical enough for weaponized murder. I'm looking at you, Stuart. It's made of only the toughest ingredients. Nails, bits of gun all squished up and stirred around. Tar. Absolutely no air will be able to get in. Men's skin doesn't need air. Airs for pussies. Did your dad ever make you kiss a snake? Mine did. That's not even a euphemism. He literally made me do that. He put a hat on a snake and called him Mr. Bertram and made me kiss him on the mouth. I sort of enjoyed it. Droogs, can I be real with you? I really need this employee of the month thing. I've been missing a lot of shifts lately. You know, due to the Mexican cartel teaming up with not Al-Qaeda and the world almost ending eight times last week. And Stuart's always been there to swoop in and take my shifts, making me look like a regular snake in a top hat. Bartholomew, that's my boss, Bartholomew, he called me into his office last week to ask if everything was all right at home. And I didn't have the heart to tell him that things were definitely not all right at home. That I may be the best sniper in the world and save the planet more times than I could count. But what about the man behind the mask? What about Simon Riley from Manchester, you know, with a football club? Somebody tell me I'm a good person. Please, somebody tell me I'm good. Somebody tell me I'm good. <laughs> oh, hey there, my good friend Simon. What's all the ruckus back here? Get the fuck out of here, Stuart. I will use your head as a novelty door knocker. Okay. <laughs> Fucking nerve of that guy. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So paint your face like it's Dutch Christmas and slap on a skull mask so the world can't see you cry. Eagle McGee's male murder cream. It's not makeup. It's male cup. Hey, have you ever been stuck in traffic? And you've thought to yourself, oh, I wish that I could just drive really fast through all this traffic, but maybe it would also be exciting if there were guys shooting at me and I had to lean out the window and shoot back at those guys. And then for even more variety, maybe if they were throwing mines at me that I had to dodge, and then maybe every once in a while, if I had to jump up on the roof of my truck and jump over to another truck. Um, a brick what? wall has appeared behind Josh. Uh, <laughs> there is a microphone standing in front of him. 
Uh, he is being heckled by me currently <laughs> about if, this insane ding, type ding, five ding, he's ding, begun. Ding, 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 ding. I'm just saying, what if it was all of these things? What's the deal with convoys? <laughs> <laughs> that if, if they had named this mission that, <laughs> What's I would the have deal actually with forgiven this game everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, I will say they start this mission by dangling you upside down out of a helicopter and you have to like swing around and shoot at people while you're upside down. Yeah. That's very unpleasant. I didn't care for it's, that. Uh, so. And it's not the much like The Last of Us. That's actually going to be a mechanic that you do again in this game. It's one of the like mm-hmm. five mm-hmm. things that you do twice yeah, being is be upside, upside down, down mechanic. Yeah, yeah. we're uh, I, I'm barely ever upside down, to be honest. I, like, mm. I, I'm sure some, some people are more in their lives, but I, I, I mm-hmm. wouldn't think that being in, in the army would like increase the proportion of your life that you spent upside down. I think it just kind of no. depends on what you're into. But like, that's that's the important thing is like your ceiling. It depends on what kind of residence you have, right? If you're able to rig anything up to the ceiling. Uh, Brian, have you have you come into contact with a lot of people who have been able to accommodate that? No, that's what I'm saying. It's New York. No one fucking has an apartment that can do this shit, man. But in Gallup, mm. let me tell you, it's a <laughs> regular hoist fest. Still have my old ID card from hoist fest 20. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, AJ, I think you had you had some strong feelings about uh, this this convoy mission uh, in yeah. which you need to move up amongst a bunch of trucks, mm-hmm. find the one with Laswell inside, and get her out. Yeah, this was this almost made me quit video games forever. Not mm. just this mm-hmm. game, but like the concept of holding a controller in order to yeah. get my feelings out. It is uh it is insufferable, it is interminable. Yes. It is yep. the precision that is required even on the lowest difficulty, which I had to turn it down to just to survive this thing is unconscionable and it is the driving mechanics are so terrible like there are three different trucks that you could theoretically pilot but only one of them is at all viable and it's the tiny little guy because you're able to actually dodge and weave and avoid all the mines that are being thrown at you in a the way that nearly is- invisible mines i just kept yeah. blowing up for no reason probably about 10 times before i realized that there were tiny glowing things on the road yeah oh, really the, the 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 glowing things at least in, in- from what I was playing, I found the glowing lights on the mines to actually be extremely obvious. But maybe on maybe the PC it's version, it rendered thing. differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but maybe yeah. maybe it's because you were just, like close to the monitor and I was sitting across my room. Maybe. Oh, that, I, I mean, know. yeah, that I, might I, be I just, that. I just think about it in these terms. I remember what the rest of the plot is like, and I remember that this is supposed to be set in the real world modern warfare. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I'm just imagining that you like fail this mission and you die, and the like the the U.S. military like recovers your body or whatever, and there's like a military funeral. And it's, it's it like in the paper, and it's like, how how did he die? And it, and the answer is, he was trying to leap from the roof of one truck <laughs> to another truck. to another truck when a guy threw a landmine yes. out of the back of a third truck, <laughs> yes. and blew him up. And you just kind of think, no, a uh, training accident. That's classified. Yeah. <laughs> The point where you get to the mines, too, is so funny because it's like you're driving along. You've been doing this like lean out of the window and shoot. You're also Mm -hmm. like you're not in a vehicle with another person. So you are driving zero dog 30 Bowser for throwing a blue shell. (laughs) And so then you get to this point where there's a bunch of cars blown up and they go civilians. Damn. (laughs) These people will stop at nothing. After we have leveled an entire Mexican suburb. Right. right. It's like, oh yeah, oh fuck. Oh no, not the civilians. (laughs) Well, remember (laughs) in the Mexican in the Mexican suburb, everyone evacuated immediately. Right. Right. Very considerate. You know? Yeah. It was yeah. (laughs) They they were like, please blow up our school. We just Uh, not mm. the church. Blow up everything else. The soccer field. Get my house. Yeah, blow up the church. Not the church. It is so funny because if this uh, if this level were like another three or four minute level, I'd be like, mm. that was annoying, but fine. Right. This yeah. thing goes on forever. Oh, yeah. There was a point where I failed the mission because I didn't grab a rocket launcher off of. I think it's prices back. Yes. Yes. Uh, even Me though. Too. 
Oh, I didn't yeah, know yeah. that that's what you were supposed to do. Yeah, the rest yeah. of the truck is outfitted with guns. So right. I kept picking up those guns, and it was just right. like, oh, they got away because you didn't pick up the right gun at yep, the right time. I did the same time. thing. I did the same thing. Because the game moves so quickly between all of these different ideas, and it's always throwing a new mechanic at you, you mm. are constantly having to adapt and change. But this particular one is throwing a, a brand new set of mechanics at you. You have never mm. driven up until this point. No. You have never yeah, needed to. This is to, your like first <laughs> driving lesson. <laughs> <laughs> you've, never needed, you've never needed to jump between vehicles before, and you never will again. You also, you are both driving and shooting. Like, so <laughs> rather than what might be a more sensible decision, which would be, oh, let's, we'll, we'll have a part where you shoot while someone else drives, and we'll have a part right. where you drive while someone else shoots. You have to do both at the same time, but right. you can't actually be driving while you are shooting, so you need to lean out to shoot and then lean back into the car to drive, lean back out, and so on and so forth. It's a fucking mess. And also, there's mm -hmm. mines now, yes, so yes. also yes. dodge those. The easiest way, by the way, to dodge the mines, and this is just a pro hack, is don't drive on the road. They oh, don't yeah. throw mines sure, off sure. the road. Well, they throw a it's couple of mines off the road. But yeah, if you just sort just of hang you around, if you, know, you hang yeah. around the shoulder, but don't go too far off the shoulder because the game will just blur out and be like, That's you right. fucked up. It's That's over. Right. I also I also like it, it's really suffering from a bad case of like hit points ISIS, which is mm -hmm. my absolute sort of like bet noir in any shooter game yeah. is. You stop the gun stops being a gun and starts being a device that reduces a health bar. Like yeah, yeah. Yes. and and so it's been all right in like until now, but the second the convoy shit starts, like being in a car means every motherfucker in this game uh can instantly like can survive, can just like tank being shot many times. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then they start throwing my least favorite archetype of any enemy in, in, in any video game. Mm. It, and he's in all of them. I, I like to call him the heavily armored cunt. Just a guy yeah. with a lot of armor. He's got like usually got a face mask or something. He's got like a deeper voice actor, so you know he's gonna fuck you up. Yeah. And he like walks around, usually with a light machine gun, and you have to shoot pieces of armor off of him yep. because like it stops counting. Yeah, that's how it works. This is how guy. I hate him so works. bad, dude. I, I wasted like Hours of my life on this shit yeah. for a game that I don't like because I I don't know I felt like a a duty to posterity to like see the fucking. There was ending. a call for it. There was a call yeah. for that. <laughs> particular yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Modern exactly. Warfare Two. Um, Modern Warfare Two. <laughs> I love it. My Modern favorite Warfare one is I... because the original game. I do want to say this. This was a joke that I that I would constantly say, which is like, look, anytime a friend would do something for me, I'm like, look, you've gone above and beyond the Call of Duty for Modern Warfare Two. Mm. Uh, <laughs> because it was it th I'm glad that they've like simplified the naming conventions a little bit, but it, it is so weird that they're trying to like erase the old game. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. they're just yeah, trying yeah. to be like, I don't uh, forget about the mass shooting in the well, airport. In, in, Focus in, on the convoy in, but, game, but don't it's, forget about it either. <laughs> right? No, because all the characters are named the same. Right? But they're different now. <laughs> in in the first one, General Shepard, he was the, he was the bad guy. He, he, uh -huh. he, oh, he looked completely cool. different, but it's the same name. But he was the bad guy. That was the like big twist ending. But you can't do that anymore. You like you can't have yeah. an American like well, you, well in this there's an American who's evil, but like Well you you certainly can't do that to Glenn Morshower. You can't do no, that to you Aaron can't Pierce do that to like someone who's like in the actual military. It has to be yeah. like a Blackwater guy. Right, right, right. It's like they did Star Trek into Darkness, where it's like just these weird little points of like, hey, you remember the guy who made the Genesis planet? Well, in this new timeline, he's Mr. Big Bad Boy and he kills I was, everybody. I remember, <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure, wasn't I yelling at you about Into Darkness when we were in uh, Scotland, Alice, about how much I hate yeah, that yeah, fucking yeah. movie? Oh, shit. Josh, <laughs> yeah. I'm so shocked that we have not just screamed in each other's faces about this movie because oh, it, it's it so fucking pisses me off bad. so goddamn bad. No, it... And it's, it's, it's interesting, right? Because, yeah, I, I do think that this game has a lot of the same weirdness that Into Darkness does, where it's like, Call hey, remember that? In two Roman numerals darkness. There we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, remember this guy? He's back in pog form. But it's like, who cares? <laughs> like, why? I don't remember him from before. I, I want a soap pog. 
Are you kidding me? I'd love a soap pog. I don't know. I, I look. They we, go we, for a lot of money at Hoist Fest. We get my, through my, like LC Nombre Funko Pop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wait, we wait, should... wait! I'm googling Call of Duty Funko Pop. Oh let's go. God! Oh, no, yeah. we, she, we, she, we she, should they definitely buried like a hundred thousand of the LC Nombre Funko Pop in like oh, a, the, a, a graveyard yeah, in yeah, Albuquerque. Yeah, yeah. It's with, like the ET. With, uh, yeah, with ET. Oh, you, yeah. you better believe you can buy some Call of Duty Funko Pops. Now, oh, are those me. Funko? Pops comprising a lot of the topsoil in like, you know, wherever they dumped them. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. certainly. Sure. But but you can buy them, you can buy a price, you can buy a soap Funko Pop. Can you yeah, buy you a Hassan? Do I don't think they no. Well see, here's no, the no thing, Hassans. you can't you can't keep Hassan, right? Because there's rules. Mm. You can't mm. kill him because that'll start a war and you can't keep him because because we just don't do that. That's something we, right. we didn't I, I forgot to mention earlier, is that you actually capture Hassan. You, and then you have you, to let him go. You roll around with him a little bit. Yeah. You hate a little of bit. Right. And then you have mm-hmm. to just fucking you don't follow any rules anywhere else. That's the whole point of this unit, I think. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like, no, we just can't keep him. We just his, his can't. lawyer shows up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Odenkirk rolls out yeah, there yeah, yeah, in a beat yeah. up little sedan <laughs> and is like, hold on now. There are some things that are just hand waved away for the sake of this is what the plot needs to have happen. And yeah. another one of these things is that we get to the next level here, which is El Cien Nombre, as we've mentioned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're and, back in the cartel uh, plot. We're in the cartel thing. And, and this is clearly, I think, as you said, AJ, what they had originally wanted to center everything around, because honestly, the narrative starts to come into focus here. Like it, it, mm-hmm. it doesn't it yeah. never really makes sense, but it makes a little more sense here because yeah. we're at least now after the person who is, I guess, providing or seems to be providing a lot of these missiles and doing a lot of this sort of back alley exchange uh, yeah. on behalf of the cartel. And so we've, we've found two missiles, right? There right. was the one that we fucked up and then there was, the, there was the other one. And, and then so there's a third. We third know that missile. there's a third. And the only two people who know where the missile are, are Hassan and El Sinombre. El Sinombre. And this is also very 24. And I keep saying this over yeah. and over yeah, again, but this like, is yeah. extremely 24. The MacGuffin like, is out there and there's only one person who knows where it is. Oh shit. It's such a 24 ass thing. And so for some reason, soap, who will remember from before is is one of the guys. He sure is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's the Scottish one. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. correct. Each um, uh, each character in in this unit are their their nickname is what they masturbate with. <laughs> Ghosts? What so the it, fuck does Gaz masturbate with? That's for you to imagine. Yeah. It's classified. <laughs> Soap is, I guess, a decoy now. He goes yeah. up to the house, and this is not explained, but he needs to go to the house as a decoy and get dragged yeah, into he interrogation. He to get tortured, like right. me at Hoist yeah. Fest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. So you go in, and there's this guy named Diego who is just the most, like, racist fucking stereotype of a dirty mm-hmm. Mexican I've ever seen. Like yeah. mustache twirling. I fucking, I love this section because oh, yeah. he like leads you down the hallway and there's a guy who just keeps kicking you. Yeah, you like keep getting shoved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the this whole time weird... someone's playing a flamenco guitar in the background. <laughs> it's yeah. this weird thing where like the screen just goes blurry and you just right. shoot ahead like you're right. playing a VR game. And if you yeah. turn around and watch that guy, he just sort of jolts into place every time the that Diego oh, moves far enough away from you, yeah. so that when he kicks you, it's it's there's basically no animation at all. There's no keyframes. It's That's just like so funny. He's in kick you mode now, and then back <laughs> to normal, and then back to kick you mode. And he's like <laughs> lower texture than everyone else too. It's very weird. So if it's you don't great. touch the controller, do you just like get? Kicked into position, yeah. or does yeah, the game just end? Kicking you, you the whole, move. No, no, <laughs> you, you do keep get, kicking you, you the entire. You way. keep getting kicked you into just position. Bounce down <laughs> into. You end up in an interrogation room with a with a really hot lady. The internet has is very very horny for cartel mommy. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and given that she's introduced suffocating a dude to death by like putting a plastic bag over his head, mm. I entirely understand where they're coming from. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is scene nombre, and the game tries to treat it like it's a twist later in the mission, but it's like very obvious right at this point mm. that it's like, yeah, this mm. is the leader of the cartel. It's a yeah. woman. Oh, so here's here's a weird thing. When I first fired up this game, yeah. and it took me like half an hour to get through the menus and actually find where to play this campaign. Oh god, it's wild. But, but when I first like had the game run, it played a cutscene before it did anything else, 
and it was of her getting rescued from the prison later in this game. Yeah. Without any context. Right. Did you see that too? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Because okay. it's season three. They're, they, uh, I for felt all the like DLC I hallucinated stuff, it. Yeah, for all the DLC mm. stuff, they're really doubling down on her as a character because they know the fan base is horned and they want more money. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they're like, you'll pay for the battle pass <laughs> if you um, get access to more of her content. 390 hits yes, on AO3, yes. by the way. Just wanted to okay. point okay. that out. That's a lot more than Citizen <laughs> Kane. <laughs> the funniest, the funniest thing that I've seen is uh, I have seen some OnlyFans girls doing ghost cosplay, where it's like uh, with the full mask and everything, but like lifting up the shirt and you see the tits underneath, yes! and it's like, yes, that's that's <laughs> that says something about like the gender in our times of like uh, increasing fascism, but I'm not sure what. Yeah, me neither. Uh, if, I, if I were more of a French philosopher, I would be able to like articulate this yeah. very cleverly, but, but like. Like, instead, I'm just like, huh? <laughs> Valeria basically, uh, yes, they designed a very hot lady so that people would get haunt for her. And, you know, mm-hmm. she's a real she's a real operator. She's a real badass. You know, she interrogates yeah. you. You can do this in numerous different ways in terms of how you answer the questions. I don't know what happens. Are there yeah. different potential outcomes for this scene? Mm, I don't think I don't so. Think I don't know. So. They, okay. they tell you to just tell her everything. Right? Yeah. They tell you to give up all the information, and so I do give up all the information. But if you Maybe succeed, she kills you or something. Yeah, she. if you succeed, she's like, oh, wow, you know so much. And then she kills the other guy who's in there. Yeah, and uh, but that's here's the that. thing: this was hor- this was harrowing for me because it was a pop quiz on a plot I had like half paid attention to. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, this yeah, this yeah, was yeah, the yeah. point where I was like, wait, we're PMCs. When did right, that happen? Right, right. Yeah. Quite literally, this will be on the test. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Are you still paying attention? We will make sure. We end up learning later on in this level that, uh, well, Valeria actually is Elsie Nombre. Oh! oh. 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 Blast by your fellows. Oh. Uh, turns out that she's El Con, or La, La Con Nombre. Uh, uh, yeah. So she, she's like, got a thing for horses, by the way. A lot of yeah. horse paintings in this house. Mm. Yeah, th- this is like, mm. they, they did their World War II mission again, where like Call of Duty World War II had this mission where you didn't actually have to do any combat necessarily. You could just talk to people and uncover documents and shit. And so they tried to do it with this one too. But again, like the stealth never cools down. Right. The moment you do anything wrong, you're in the next phase of conflict. Well, which is sort of a constant battle. And so yeah. you just hide in a closet the whole time and pick everyone off one by one. That's yeah, the only like, way to like actually do stealth in this. First yeah. person hitman, but not fun is the best yeah. way that I yeah. can put it here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, there's also you can't like put on safe. disguises either. Yeah, you yeah. can find stuff no. in the safe, but it only vaguely helps. Like, right. even, is that like safe? The, yeah, there's a safe in um <sighs> in what's his in this Diego's like, room. Yeah, there's like forking paths, but like not very interestingly. Also, mm-hmm, yeah. uh, it it doesn't have quick save and quick load, does it? Which you kind of need. No, it, it does auto save. It only has auto save. Yeah, uh, so it, okay, yeah. it always brings you back to exactly the point where everything got fucked up. Right. So, so like if, if you if you are seen and you want to like stealth it, what you're yeah, obliged you- to do is allow yourself to be killed. As soon as you're yes. seen. Yeah, yes. and, and really you'd have to start the whole level over again if if you just happen to get an unlucky autosave in the middle there. Great which design. Will happen. Great design. <laughs> so I, eventually I no eventually what happens here is that you learn that Valeria was Mexican special forces, and then she like killed a guy and she became the guy. Uh, she yeah, says, she's like a bro brackets evil. She's yeah. like turned evil. <laughs> she says, as long as there is a war on terror, there will be no real war on drugs. Oh, that okay. doesn't make any what, sense. What? So no, it's really an absolute game to wars on concept at the same time. Like, yeah, if, like, if we all remember after 9-11, things really cooled down at the border. Absolutely. Everyone stopped talking about the border. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, I all did the prayer of Jabez and we enlarged this, our border. Also, also like her, pl- her plan to do this involves the war on terror coming through the border and blowing up cops yes. with an RPG. Right. Yeah, right. That will make us ignore Mexico and the cartels. The cartels who are being terror terrorists right now. <laughs> right, right. Because Okay, so here's the thing, and this is very, this is actually a very interesting thing, is that this game doesn't understand that there can be more than one war happening at once. Like, well, and- well, it's it, it, not modern it, it, it warfare, is it? Them. Yeah, that's it's exactly not modern right. Warfares. It is modern warfare. It just congeals all conflict into like one giant us versus them thing. Correct. Yeah. Which yeah. is, again, I mean, like, that's the point. The point is 
the USA is going to be ontologically the good guy at all times. Mm -hmm. Right. And so whatever it is that the government of the United States ends up in opposition with are going to be people who are unified in their fight against the U.S. That is their primary goal, their primary motivation. Now, is this true? Of course not. Does the United States provoke war? Absolutely. All the fucking time. All the time. But Mm -hmm. in in terms of how it's being presented here, it's, well, we we are fundamentally defending our... It's it's the Department of Defense. It's not the Department of War. Come on, you know? So Mm. we we do the oil rig mission that we did in the original Modern Warfare Mm -hmm. 2. And now Eric Prince and Blackwater betrays us. Oh, he betrayed me. We got fucked up. Graves here comes in with the heel turn. There's like a base you go back to. And then all of a sudden, everybody just starts blasting. It's yeah. yeah wild. He, he, they like they steal Alejandro's house. Essentially. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. He gets so mad because uh, he's oh, he so mad. Oh. the violation of bro code. Because he's like, this is my base. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. But, right. But, and, and it seems like the betrayal only happens because Graves is like, I really like this place and it's mine now. Like, there's yeah. no like ideological like underpinnings to this at all. It was just like, your base is cool and it's mine. And yep. then, you no, know, fu- you see something bad happened and we do get a flashback later that's just like a mission that goes wrong yeah and it's right. like the the u.s government covers it up and it doesn't go wrong in the way a blackwater mission goes wrong where they just start killing a bunch of children right right uh, they it get goes wrong in that they get killed by russian pmcs but then they join up with the russians right is that what this betrayal is i don't know they're hanging out with the I terrorists don't know or what are they a separate thing i don't know okay. i don't know i, can, I, I think i think, I think, I I think yeah or alice go ahead oh god i i i think what's supposed to happen is that like shadow company or whatever are trying to cover up the fact that they have fucked up by like allowing the missiles to fall into, into the, the wrong Russians hands. hands. Right. Yes. And so I the think? missiles in this game that right, Hassan the missiles has are American. They are American from, and yeah. that's the incident where it came from. But that it makes, still doesn't make sense that Graves would just randomly be like, this is my house now. Fuck you. Like, yeah, there, no, there's no, no, no line like a really nice pool. Like, <laughs> we're in Las Almas once more. Uh, now we're crafting? Yeah. It's a crafting? Yeah, we're yeah. So, it's, a, it's survival horror, kind yeah, of. It's, yeah, it's, it's survival us. horror in Sim, sort of in the vein of something like Alien Isolation. Yeah. Um, and there, but, there's like sections where we have conversations between soldiers and their shadows are right. on the wall like it's Bioshock. Okay, but here's yeah. what I will say about this level. That's why they call them Shadow Company because they cast <laughs> shadows. Oh. This, this Big was... For me personally, the only part of the game where I felt truly engaged in the core gameplay loop. Now, that's not to say that it's fun. Okay. Um, it, it's, okay. it, the game yeah. is not fun. Uh, and, and as Reggie famously said, why, why bother? bother? Mm-hmm. Um, but what it what it does point toward is a game that could be good. Because you end up, you know, being stripped of all of your weapons. And yes, you have to survive. You have to uh, crawl through the different rooms, avoid enemies, craft stuff. It's the crafting you, you mechanic make from Last bombs of Us. Out of mouse traps. That's right. It's a mini action, a crazy contraption. And so <sighs> you then have the ability to potentially set stuff up. Rather than being talked to all the time and told what to do, you are finally given the latitude to make your own decisions and play the game in the way that you want to play it. And a lot of it involves, or at least should involve, yeah. setting soldiers up in certain ways so that you can encounter them in different ways. There's even a part where you can go and open up a safe and get a silenced pistol and start clicking on guys' heads, which is my favorite part of any immersive scene. Where were these safes? I found no <laughs> safes. <laughs> but, but, so the good version of this game would then also include things like a cooldown system and uh-huh. the ability yeah. to explore the level with true verticality rather than just running around through rooms. But again, the engine doesn't really allow for this. Yeah, and so yeah. what you have is this weird kind of like, you can survive, But eventually you're going to end up in a place where you're surrounded by too many guys and they just Mm -hmm. center in on your location and and you fucking die uh, and you have to reload 10 million times. You know, there are checkpoints where you kind of back into stealth now that you're in a later part of the level. 
Um, and there was this there's this one like open area that has a lot of retail shops that you're crawling around in. And I set traps at various doorways. Right. And finally, someone stepped over one of those traps, blew up. And then everyone started shooting directly at me, even though I was across the map from it. Right. They all immediately knew where I was because some guy blew up over there. Right. Yes. There's mm-hmm. just no actual stealth design right. built into this game that has forced you into so many stealth sections. But don't yeah. worry, it's going to do it many more times. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. From here on out, it's just decided <laughs> that's what this game is now. You're right, Josh. It does give you like the illusion of choice, but the corridors are so limited and the yes. progression, especially at the beginning, yeah is so bottlenecked mm-hmm. that it doesn't really give you a choice. You have to do things pretty much in an order, but it's like it doesn't let you know what that order is. Yeah. So I found myself being right. incredibly frustrated by especially the first part of this mission because it was clear that the game needed me to do it in a very particular way. And I just couldn't figure out what that was. And right. honestly, once I found the shotgun, I just I blew up a trap and then all of them just started running through a door and I picked them off. One by blah, one. Blah, blah, yep. blah, yeah, so I did. I hid yep. behind yep. a dumpster yep. and shot them one at a time. Right. And, and the in entire general, army. <laughs> and in general, that's just not usually how I play games. Like I'm not I'm not really Mm-mm. into the crafting of traps to then like lure enemies in to blow them up because it takes a lot of time and I like to kind of move Mm. quickly when I play games sure and uh, this game in particular is one that really makes you wait for things Mm. there is so much waiting in this goddamn game which is what makes it not an immersive sim ultimately because if it was designed as a real immersive sim you you know using traps to lure people in would be every bit as viable as running out with a shotgun yeah. and blasting yeah. guys yeah. while also you know keeping your guard i, I don't know alice what are your mm-hmm. thoughts on alone yeah yeah, yeah. It, I, f- I think if you compare it to something like i don't know metal gear solid 5 yeah right mm-hmm. that's a game sure. that puts a lot of thought into a lot of different systems of stealth it just it feels so so shallow and my experience of it was exactly the same it was like i would try and do something clever it wouldn't work, and what I would mm-hmm. end up doing is barricading myself in a room with one entrance and just killing everyone who came through the door one by one, yep. which they always did yep. every time. <laughs> yes. so move yeah. on to the next area and do it again, because this level is, again, way too long. So it keeps long. Yeah. going and going and going. You have, to, you have to swim. They gotta bring the swimming yeah, mechanic of back course. for like a second. Well, listen, a team, a team worked for like a year on that swimming <laughs> mechanic for no reason. People would not see their, their wives for, for years. Yeah. It's like I missed my son's first words in order to make the swimming sections in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I missed Hoist Fest 2022! <laughs> it's truly incredible to me that this game came out last year and the AI is dumber than Thief. Which is a game yeah. that came mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. I was just about to ask if there are any uh, immersive sims that you could recommend, Josh. Uh, Thief, Thief Two. I mean, the, Josh, those are, here's the thing. I, I <laughs> actually tried to play. I, 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 I tried yeah. to play Thief and Thief Two recently. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Um, uh, yeah. I, I had a problem, and maybe yeah. you haven't heard this before. Okay. It was. Uh, uh-huh. It was too dark. Okay. <laughs> no, it was but too dark. But uh, but I really like those games in all of those looking yeah. glass games came out 22, three, four years prior to this. Yeah. An incredible and they had amount of time. Better AI. It's insane. <laughs> it's nuts. How do you, how do you have this many people working on this game and you can't design Functional AI. I mean, they I'd, can flank, I mean, I'd sort say, of. But fuck's sake, I'd say Riven has better AI than this. <laughs> like it's <laughs> the sequel to Mist. <laughs> <laughs> like this is just also there are pinatas in multiple places because we're in Mexico and uh, if you shoot them they're not physics items oh nothing come happens on. Oh, come on you can't just put pinatas that's, that's in the game and you're not gonna fill them with that's, candy that's come Chekhov's on. pinata that's I wanted so them to be insulting. filled with guns <laughs> <laughs> make this fucking borderlands just give me a bazillion fucking guns uh, you reach the end of this level too and there's like a big it turns out hey guess what stealth no longer an option you just gotta nope. no. you just gotta run no. and fucking gun right and it ends in the most anticlimactic way possible you have fought a gauntlet of like half hour 45 minutes through all these fucking dudes right you reach mm-hmm. the end of the mm-hmm. level and you just kind of get in a car and drive away you just go home yeah you just go home <laughs> yeah, you, you, you gotta there were cars there were so many cars before the church you could have driven away at any fucking time <laughs> yeah you get to alejandro's safe house where they're like why did graves turn and someone's like 
Las Almas will corrupt anyone. It's like, that's... That's not a reason. That's not an answer. That's not an answer. <laughs> it, it happened like, because the plot How needed did it to corrupt happen? him. Yeah, you know what? But you know what? Let's just fucking kill this guy. Can we just, like, kill graves? Can we fill <laughs> well, a first, grave with fill graves? Not first yet. First, we have to see Ghost's face, and then, because the most important thing <laughs> is hanging out with your bros, yes. we gotta all become yeah. ghosts. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you, yeah, do yeah. Like, you, you do a prison break sequence. There's actually yep. a part of this game I found fun. It was somewhat shallow, but it was like you're, where you're like on a security camera and telling Ghost where mm. to go, That's and fun. you're setting bombs in cars, and the bombs are optional and they later become useful like yeah. because then the the guards will drive up and you're like oh ho ho and you just blow them up right that was kind of uh, that's that's the only that's the only compliment i will give this game was yeah. that little section which yeah. i don't think anyone else likes oh i thought it was okay i mean i oh, okay. don't I, there's enough there that's interesting in terms of what's going on mechanically and there's something yeah. kind of fun about like it's it's a bit of a puzzle box because it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. you got to get mm. this guy before I get that guy and so on and yeah. so forth. Yeah, and it's nice to see that almost. somebody on the Infinity War team had played Ghost Trick for the DS and it was yes! just like, oh, yeah. yes, <laughs> that. Yes, that. it is that. Oh, yeah, at my least God. if you want to steal from games, steal from like fun and inventive ones. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. At like, this point, we've done the prison break. We also have the hindsight flashback where we yeah. see the plot that led to graves breaking bad but like it doesn't really yeah, explain I, I have it like long since stopped caring yeah, yeah. we just need and now and now everyone's a ghost everyone's wearing the ghost mask right mm -hmm. everyone's because, a ghost okay wait uh, for, because part of being uh, like best friends with somebody is when they're about to do some out-of-pocket shit not only do you have to like you know ride with them but you have to dress exactly like, like them. them you have to exactly. like take, mm -hmm. take their like signature bit and do that as well yeah you, you talented have to talent Mr. Ripley, Mr. Ripley them, them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just a whole like crew of friends all talented Mr. Yes. Ripley and ghost my, my, my friends and I used to refer to and still do refer to masturbation as making ghosts so oh. while I was watching this scene I, think I was like refer to it as talented Mr. Ripley yeah <laughs> like, because we all do it together. I think, oh, there's a point There's a point in this mission, in the Prison Break mission, where somebody does something brave, and one of the other guys is like, kids got sand. And I had what? no idea what it was. <laughs> That's just a noun. You just picked something at random. It's, oh, it's, it's, kids uh, got marbles. Kids got Zeppelin. <laughs> now we have the ghost team. See, it's a team and they're all ghosts. They're and, making ghosts. Uh, and they're teaming up with Valeria's guys too, because at this point, why not? Why not? This mission has us going in to get graves the, the time has come mm -hmm. to get graves he needs to get got by us and R roughly 12 yeah. people are going on to a fully stocked mexican military base that's that right is Brian. crawling with mm -hmm. with uh pmcs and, that barbara uh, aaron reich warned us about and they've got helicopters <laughs> they've got tanks they've got all of it but these 12 guys are going to get the job done and so we infiltrate through i guess this basement and i <laughs> fucking <laughs> laughed out loud when it, there was the reveal of like, hey, there are lasers in this basement. And it's yeah. like, what are we going to do? How are we going to? And then there's this huge, big red disable <laughs> button that you push. You walk past one laser and then you push the disable button to get rid of the other lasers. It feels like the fake, so loud. It feels like the fake game yeah. in Stanley Parable. Where yes. you just yeah. have to push yeah. button to win. So I had this weird visual glitch when I played this. It was also notable in the prison sequence. I had so much like ghosting so many little flares in my vision from lights that weren't there making yep. so many ghosts. and when i was down in the tunnel i started to realize it was like oh if a light is anywhere in front of you regardless of how far away it is or if it's behind something you will see the glare in your vision right and there was one really bright light that is like in the forward position as you're moving forward if you look up slightly your entire screen will just get blotted out yeah. And I thought, OK, this is just happening on PS4. I'm playing last gen. It's like cyberpunk. Everything's just worse here. No, nope, whatever. happens on PC, too. And PS5. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sun. You are in a tunnel under the ground and you are being blinded by the sun. <laughs> they didn't think anyone was going to make it this far. No. They didn't think anyone was going to actually play the campaign. Because why would they? Only sickos would I just, sit down and play the entirety yeah, of the Call of Duty campaign. Assholes. Yeah, they would just <laughs> sit around. <laughs> What's really wild to me, too, is that, you know, they've had, what, at least half a year 
to patch this. Mm. It's yeah, never not gonna going get to get fixed. No, this, no, this is no, a game as a service and they are not servicing this. No, this is. And, and it's like weird because there's so many elaborate set pieces and there is like such a degree of polish to this game to some extent. Right. Yes. But this is just bizarre. It, it renders this part of the game almost unplayable. You have to keep like looking away from the direction that you're supposed to be moving in yeah. in order to get past like three little laser things for five minutes. But, but this was also mm. very apt commentary because. Because Trump mm. had looked into the eclipse, and mm. so it was trying mm. to train mm. you that you Got could it. also stare into the Got eclipse it. and not suffer. When you stare into the eclipse, the eclipse stares into you. This mm. is definitely a lot easier on PC because, again, you can just like point the mouse in a slightly different direction. But I'm, I'm yeah. sure it's intolerable on a console. I love a sort of mandatory sewer level to mm. which I feel this is sort of <laughs> culturally adjacent. Yes. Uh, mm. I, I love a sort of very visible laser trap. I actually do love a very visible laser trap, so I enjoyed that. Yeah. I'm still kind of like, mm, why, why, why has, why has Blackwater just occupied part of Mexico? Also, what are the sort of political implications of that? Is Mexico just like cool with it? Are they not cool with it? Yeah. Is it, are the United well, States cool? What with is green? No. Want what does he want? A pool, heated pool. Uh, here's the thing: Amlo made Mexico woke. Mm. He's off looking yeah. at, at fairies in the woods, and uh, uh-huh. and now uh-huh. they just don't have any military. Yeah, anymore. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a part of this mission where you have to sneak into like an a- one of the hangars, and it was imp- it was told that I was told sucks. keep low, don't you know don't alert the guards or whatever. Yeah. So I did, and I tried to sneak in, and then it turns out you have to kill everyone mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. So yeah, there was yep. no point. So I ran into the hangar and then every one of them ran to the room one at a time. And I just kept I just blasted them. I just like, I don't I, 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 not to belabor the point, but I don't understand why you would design a game that is so deeply in conflict with what the engine is capable of actually doing. It's not right? in conflict, Josh. And like, it's not in no, conflict. One, no one was like. No it's one was calling out. No one was crying out for like a stealth game. No. no. Not for Call I mean, of I Duty, was, but not from this. Right, yeah. Yeah. right, right. Yeah, not, not like, like this. Yeah, no, they, no. They, they had, had a Duty. whole stealth franchise, which they killed. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and this is them just like pulling the organs out of a dead and dying husk and like trying to reanimate it into this other thing. But it's rejecting Anthony, it. What husk has organs? It's a husk. <laughs> oh, the husk. <laughs> by nature, that's where I store my organs. It's in husks. Oh. So, like, wait, AJ, you're making so you're making like tamales. Out of organs? Yeah, is that what's yeah, happening uh, here? Out of, mm. out of people. Mm. Out of people? Yeah. Oh, the tamales are people. What? The tamales always were people. I don't, think, I don't think they always were. Also, again, this has its own corollary in Modern Warfare 2. Oh. 1, mm. where you are, like, sniping people from a Del Taco and setting up turrets on the roof of an Applebee's. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like, what Wait, if Wait, was it branded? Do they actually get those brands for it? No, it was, they it use different names. Bug, but- uh, Cunt or oh, whatever. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They got Rockstar to make this level. <laughs> yeah, you go to Burger Cunt and Gay Pullbees. Um, <laughs> you fight a tank. It's a tank boss. It's a tank boss. It, this sucks oh, so yeah, the whole, damn bad. The whole time, yeah, the tank one shots you instantly. Yes. Uh, and right. uh, it sees you instantly. It also yes. throws more of the like amazing bulletproof dipshits at you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The whole yeah. time, uh, Philip Graves is screaming at you. <laughs> You. He's like on your radio somehow, yeah. And, and he's the one been teaching you, and he's just talking about like, all right, there's no actual story here. It's just a lot of emotions that he has. We yeah. still don't really he, like, know why he has a lot he's of bad. problems. He's like yeah. going through some shit. He's also racist. He's very keen for you to know that he's racist. <laughs> he also says uh, yeah. like, he, he says like, there's only there's only two games here, win or lose, and it's like those aren't <laughs> games. Those are missions. <laughs> Those are only two games here. Touchdown and tackle. (laughs) It's like, what are you talking about? But to be fair, that is also the core design philosophy behind this whole game. There are Mm. only two things. There are win and lose. And like, and again, this is this is where like the autosave can fuck you, because you're supposed to use rocket launchers and plastic Mm. explosives to blow this thing up. But if you use them, it autosaves and you can't you can't get it when you die. If 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 like when you die, which you will do a lot in the course of this, but especially in this bit, 
what the Call of Duty games used to do was give you like a profound quote, and the profound yes. quote would be some shit like I forgot to talk about the, the quotes. We got to talk about quotes. Only yeah, the by, dead by have seen the end of war. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But now it started quoting itself. Yes, and yeah. so you'll die, and you'll get a quote of the thing who, of the guy who just killed you just said to you. You will die to the like tank, and you'll get a little <laughs> pop up that's like. In the game of war, there's only two games: war and game. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Grace. Philip Grace. Yeah, and like some yes, of these are like yeah. you know, it's like famous generals or something. You know, it's the art of war, or it's Marcus Aurelius or Machiavelli's whatever. Machiavelli's the prince. But, yeah, and then like mm. you get quotes from the guy who wrote "How to Win Friends and Influence People," <laughs> or like Emily Dickinson or whatever. It's, it's like the same step down in quality that you have from like Civilization Five to Civilization yeah. Six, where yeah, they yeah, yeah, clearly yeah. just like Googled best quotes because yeah. they didn't. <laughs> want to reuse any of Yeah, no, no, it's Criminal Minds. The thing becomes an episode of yeah. Criminal Minds. And <laughs> even just quotes point. from Mandy Patinkin. Yeah. <laughs> Philip Graves once wrote, in the game of war, the, the quarterback is, is a general, and the football is bullets. And I have Zeppelin. Uh, the, the most jarring one for me is the greatest danger to our future is apathy, Jane Goodall. <laughs> <laughs> what does Jane Goodall have to say to like fucking oh, Call of Duty? Oh, she's a hardcore interventionalist. Yeah, yeah she's. Uh -huh, uh -huh, Jane yeah. Goodall seized a base in Mexico in order to raise her chips as a gorilla habitat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we end up killing Graves, right? We do. But we don't see yeah. him. Philip Graves become Tank. Yes. And then we blow up Tank and then Philip Graves is just dead and for me it happened midway through one of his lines and it just like the sound just like abruptly cut off. It wasn't like oh! it was just like it was, he was done talking and he was gone. It makes the Roblox this, there are two yeah. games. Win. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sound, this, not to get too far into more technical stuff, the sound is bizarre in this game. There are multiple mm -hmm. characters who peek all the time, which uh, I know mm -hmm. I'm throwing stones in the glass house again. But they uh, had a, like, <laughs> but I'm a podcaster. I don't have a million dollar yeah, budget. Yeah, yeah. Holy yeah. shit, it's so weird. I had one point where the sound went out entirely on my whole PlayStation. Oh. Like I went back to the home menu and like w started streaming off of Max, which is what HBO Max used to be. Now right. it's Max. Uh, and there was no <laughs> sound on that either. <laughs> it killed all sound forever. I had to turn the whole <laughs> thing off, unplug it, plug it back in, turn it back on. And I finally got sound. Again. Something this is, this is going to depress you so badly. Would you like mm. to know what the budget was? How yeah, much it what, cost to make this uh, Let's game? say $200 million. It's two hundred and fifty million dollars. Oh boy! Yeah. Would you like? But would you like to know how much it made in its first three days of release? No. Oh, at least a billion. I'm sure. Eight hundred million. Yeah. And yeah. then a billion within the first ten days. Yeah, sounds right. Something that I forgot ta that to mention. Another like glitch that I ran into. So in the part where you're going into the building to kill Graves. You yeah. uh, there's a part where you come across these like three of those ultra guards and you have basically no it's cover thrux. to hide behind three, three socks socks and you basically have no cover. Right. Yeah. And so you just keep mm -hmm. running in and dying over and over again. Well, here's oh, the thing. Yeah. For some reason, in my version of the game, I if I died, I had to restart the entire game. Because for some reason it wouldn't reload my save until I restarted the entire game. But here's the thing on the PC version, you can't just boot into the campaign. You boot yeah. into Warzone, you select yeah. the mm. single player campaign, and yeah. it restarts the entire game. Oh, so they oh. really want you to they really want you to play Warzone. They so really do. Every yeah. time I died, I had to spend three minutes at least reloading the entire fucking game. But the thing is, if you don't run in after those guys, Graves gets away because yep. he's on a timer. So you yeah. have to. Oh this is the my one God. again, the I'm one time sorry, everyone's I on a timer like that. You. Thank no. you. Yeah. Thank you. Here's, I was you waiting forgiven. for my fucking apology. Uh, Jesus. I, I, I'm just I'm, I've just Googled two hundred and fifty million dollars to see what you can spend two hundred and fifty million dollars on. Or <laughs> yeah, like like how much money yeah. that is. Yeah, how much uh, money is that's that? That's Tina Turner's entire estate. Oh. Tina Turner, <laughs> Tina Turner could have like paid for uh, oh, a single Call, Call of, of Duty. Duty game. Yes, 
It was Sam Bankman Freed's bail. Um, <laughs> oh, was it really? Yeah, which which he paid. Um, yeah, it was actually yeah. paid for by Bobby Kotick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's why we're not getting a Call of Duty next year. <laughs> but here's the thing: the game's over, right? We killed we killed the one who betrayed. Yeah, we me. did the boss. We did the boss. It's, what no, else? Could no, we we're no, in wait, Chicago no, now. We're no, in we Chicago. still need to get the twenty four villain. We, he, he did, yeah, you gotta you gotta get the Iranian dude. Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. when I heard yeah. Chicago, I was so shocked we did not end up in the South Side. I thought that's where it was going to go was like urban oh, crime yeah. was the next step. No, of all of no, you get, you get hella lifted into the loop. And by the way, it's actually a you pretty do get hella lifted. You're really <laughs> high up. This yeah. is, I will say, the way they render the loop here is the one moment in this game that actually looks good. Like, nice. yeah, it's, it's a really this is, this is the only way they know how to end a Call of Duty game. And mm. the last one, you're up the fucking like Burj Khalifa or some shit uh, like sure. that. Oh, sure. Sure. You gotta go to a skyscraper, and this time it's the Sears. No, tower? it's 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 not Trump Tower, is what it is. Uh, you okay, end up okay. on the side of this building. You're upside down again. Upside down, you're Bouncing rappelling the down. Inside, outside, outside, outside of this feeling. Got go in, what I should do. I go crazy you, if I can get That's right. You. you go in, yeah. you break in through the so window, you shoot convoy. guys, although if if you're too close to the window, you get eliminated by an RPG in one shot. This game sucks. Yeah, yeah you, you, you get a fucking final, game. You, you get a, a final like room that you are in where you do crafting again, but you craft new things. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you have to discover how to craft. And, and, and the whole time the guy is like wandering around threatening you and you got to hide from him. And he's coughing. He's coughing for some reason? There's I don't know why he's coughing. He also has cancer. <laughs> he also has there's, stage four there's cancer. This, there's one part in the server room, because this whole thing takes place in, like, a server room for some reason. Yeah, where they launch the missile from. And it needs servers. You fucking... There's this guy with a riot shield who cannot be flanked, and no matter how many shots you shoot at the riot shield, the shield will not break. Oh. I actually yeah. flanked him easily. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, was him. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah, I you're just a better at video him games than me. Yeah, I did I something. Him. I don't know. He turned around for some reason. I got him easy. I, I, I hate riot shield guy, but not as much as I hate big armor guy. Yeah, yeah, I, hate big I, armor I think so that's much. my ranking as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but but and, also, and, oh, and the guys that you have to stealth around and craft, craft to death. Are, are armor cunts. Yes. They are helmet, you don't have helmet body armor motherfuckers. Oh, yeah, and, and you don't have a gun. And, and that, the gun you get won't have enough bullets to kill the armor guy. That yeah. bug from before where like the lights just shine through all the walls. <laughs> well, that's happening for all light yeah, sources it's now. still here. <laughs> um, so like there's just random like red pinpricks and yellow pinpricks and green pinpricks <laughs> of light all over the place that are just blinding you. Oh my god, this is a mess. It was a really good get that they got Sufjan Stevens to actually do the soundtrack for this mm. section. Mm. Yeah. Hark, <laughs> the team 141 has infiltrated the tallest skyscraper in Chicago. Oh no! <laughs> With like a parenthetical <laughs> subtitle, uh, an ode to Lori Lightfoot. There we um, go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you, you they launch the missile just like in Modern Warfare 2. Das erst. But they launch the missile, but it doesn't actually strike uh, the space station like it does in the first one. No, you it you, you blow up, it you up blow over it up Chattanooga air. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Which is you, you, fine, clearly. Yeah, no, yeah. It's you have to good. stealth your way around and do the computer like you did before. Again, one repeating element. Then you slowly have to stealth a guy to death. And then Hassan takes you uh, captive. Hmm. Yeah. And then yes. now, in the very last moment, you are once again ghost right your ghost yeah yeah, yeah. You, yeah. so you, you so begin in and modern, end ghost yeah so in modern warfare 2 2009 a love story you have <laughs> to get to the guy who betrayed you and then you get one shot to throw a knife at him okay and then you kill him that way so here we do the one shot again but your ghost across the street and you probably How could he have get across the very you probably carefully. could have sniped hassan a long time ago i would assume he's been walking by a bunch of big glass windows that's a good point but it's only yeah, now yeah, only now like that he's attacking so like oh, i hate america he's also well he's actually saying extremely accurate things he's like you sign yeah. treaties and you break them you you invade other countries you do all these things like yeah these are all things that america yeah, does the, and yeah. you're you're the bad all guy the i don't know whatever yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, rebuttal sniper rifle mm. <laughs> yes yes and he also he also says the line which i think is sort of this game's politics in a nutshell which is we are not attacking we are invading, invading. okay mm -hmm. sure 
It's what? great. It's great replacement <laughs> shit. It's great replacement yeah, shit. Yeah, true. Yeah. This whole country yeah. is turning Persian before our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting really good rice. <laughs> <laughs> Our coffee has never been better. <laughs> There's so many tomatoes in our breakfasts now. It is though. It is. It's. It's. It's great replacement. It's. Yeah. You know, fear of the other, fear of the unknown, and you know, we end it with a bullet, and then we're all on the Top Gun bar. Yeah. Right. 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 It's like you piece of shit. We will never allow you to like. Uh, fucking uh, make kebabs in America. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, I mean, and I just, I really want to uh, emphasize this, is that when you kill Hassan, you get a slow motion headshot. You see yes. his brains. The only one! The only yes. one never in the gruesome game. gruesome like this at any other point in cutscenes or anything. No. Yeah, again, remember when you stab that guy in Amsterdam, he doesn't even bleed. No, no, he just kind of collapses there's, there's down. There's really, yeah, there's no gore, <laughs> there's no cool. sex. But yeah, no, Hassan's yeah. brain explodes. Yeah, so yeah. it, it mm-hmm. fully blows out the back of his head, and it's supposed to be like, oh yeah, we got him, we got the bad guy. Ooh. But Graves, mm-hmm. who I would argue fucked you over much, like, it, like more personally, right? Yeah. He, he blows up in a tank and you don't see it. Right. It happens yeah. off screen mm-hmm. and usually midline. So it is it, there's just it is this insidious undercurrent to this entire game of you should revel when these like foreign terrorists are killed. But when it's white people yeah. and yeah. they die off screen and the foreign terrorists are explicitly like because of your weak borders, we will be cooking lavash <laughs> in the White House. <laughs> and it's like, right. what? 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 <laughs> Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> and also, you killed Hassan's best friend. Of course it's, he'd be pissed. It's, right. it's very difficult to invade America. You have oceans on two sides, Canadians on one side, and, and like Mexico on the other side. What? what? That, see, that's the thing. That's where we're weak. Pierre Polievre is is fucking he's conspiring <laughs> with the with the Ayatollah yeah, yeah. as we it's speak like, here it's today. It's like the Iranian Canadian offensive. <laughs> you're, you're, getting, you're, you're getting rice in your poutine, and you're yes. going to be cooking that under, uh, like under the dome of the capital. That's going to be Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Three. So <laughs> the last thing that we get out of this is, you know, yeah, there's they they, they hang out in the bar from Top Gun. They cheers. There's Another guy. Yeah, the bar who from to Top Gun get. is interesting too because, mm-hmm. like, the, the, it's sort of. I, I was saying this before we started mm. recording that I think it's a it's a bit of a call, uh, like an unearned callback to mm. of duty to yeah. the the way in which these guys, these special forces guys, used to be mythologized. Yeah, right? which mm-hmm. is yeah. in in your, like your eighties action movies, it would be like, oh, uh, we're like behind the news. You yeah. know, stuff happens, yeah. people don't even know about it, and then we have like a nice quiet. Dream and we celebrate known only to ourselves, you know, we're the unsung heroes. Here, they're they're pretty fucking sung. I think someone would have noticed they are sung shooting as RPGs shit. around in El Paso yeah. or Chicago. For He's that matter. wearing right. the ghost mask at the bar. <laughs> I don't yeah. even know how he drinks the beer. He, yeah. he came into the bar wearing the full ghost head. Yeah, mask. I think if somebody and walked into my bar, everyone has camera phone. I'd be like, <laughs> sir, we can't serve you as long as you're wearing that. It's you're like, gonna have to take that off. Ghost, why are you wearing that in the bar? And he's like, oh, it's Dutch Christmas somewhere. <laughs> uh, Just like, I'm getting asked to ID the ID, he's also wearing the skull mask. Yeah. <laughs> I take off my in skull mask and I'm wearing a skull balaclava underneath That's the funny. entire bar groans at my shit. He's a never nude, <laughs> all right? He just, how does he drink? Yeah, how does he drink? It has he? teeth. <laughs> he, he, goes goes he, has no straw. he drinks everything through through the mask it's just <laughs> it just pours it after in. this whole fucking conclusion we do get one last thing which is i guess now we're on an airplane this is just a cut scene but yeah. because we needed to Post-credit get the call sequence. the final call back the post credit sequence has some guy assembling right. a 3D printed all pistol of this on a plane. was because of the Russian yep. ultra nationalist, which is a very specific term referring to the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare series, mm-hmm. where the Russian mm-hmm. ultra nationalists were the whole thing. But we haven't really been dealing with them. Amaz- except for in that Amazing flashback. that like that bet paid off, and yeah. Russian ultra nationalism was like the actual thing. Right. You know? Right. 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 Like th- how that- lucky must they feel after this guy <laughs> assembles his little 3D printed gun? 
Uh, he gets a text on his little phone, and the text says, remember, no Russian. And he drops the phone yeah, into text, his champagne. You, you have it in writing on an unencrypted... <laughs> <laughs> like, like hmm, I wonder why they said no Russian. I bet it's because none of them are Russian. But, you know, it's, 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 it's the reference. That's uh, it. We've done it. We've talked about modern about warfare, too. about to do 9-11, too. too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe the real modern warfare was the friends we made along the way. A second I don't know. 9-11 I, That has is struck. literally basically the contention of the No, game. it is, right? Yeah. But as we are, of course, all friends here, we might as well have mm. a bit of a friendly conversation, sort of yeah. wrapping mm. up, like, what the fuck did, what is this? <laughs> Ellis, you had specifically said, I want to talk about Modern sentence. Warfare yeah. 2. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're we're we've all done wearing it. Josh's glasses uh, in solidarity. <laughs> we, we are Josh team. Uh, yeah, my <laughs> hair is long and luscious. Strangers at yeah. bars are complimenting me on it. Yeah. Like, Josh I, never I, takes off his glasses. I'm a lesbian now. Uh, and, I, and I smoke. But yeah, I mean, and I are vote. you happy? Are you happy, Alice? Have you have you done what was what was hoped to be accomplished here in this uh, in this time? I think I've accomplished my mission. Okay, good. You know, I, I, I think I have compromised this this podcast and all of your psyches to a permanent end. Perfect. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like what what exactly about this when you when we look back at the whole arc of it, what jumps out at you is being particularly like you would I think even said when we were talking about mm. this on Twitter like this is a fever dream of late empire what does yes, that mean yeah, and it's it's it is deeply deeply confused right mm -hmm. and i think the the like uh the war in ukraine has been an absolute gift to activision yeah. because it will allow sure. them to cohere yes. so much of this it, and like it, you know like throw it into the mix here um because this was something where it was made at a time where america had like enemies sure but not like an enemy yeah. and it's so it just sort of like picked things and like threw them together in a way that makes no sense and it mm -hmm. knows it makes no sense and all it can really offer is like like warmed over great replacement bullshit because that yeah. like it's it's a sort of a, it's a place where mass culture is out of ideas and the ideas that are on the table are being put there by fascists and they're being sort of like picked up and laundered uh, and becoming like uh, more respectable and more mainstream now to 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 say that like America isn't being attacked it's being invaded that's the kind of yeah. shit that would have forced yeah. you off of 4chan onto 8chan back in the day yeah. Yeah. right and now it's in this AAA game it's 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 like a very uh, a very grim sort of place and in particular th the way that it treats the figure of the operator right is so mm -hmm. enticing to what is going to be a young audience where it's like mm -hmm. if you want to have friends if you want to experience like close yeah. friendship amongst men the way that you do that is within a like a military or a pseudo military way and and you like get tactical with and all of these guys like support each other and they are brothers mm -hmm. and they are a team mm -hmm. and yeah, sometimes that's true, but it's it's more complicated than that. But, I think about, uh, in in particular, uh, Ben Robert Smith, the Ameri uh, the Australian war mm, criminal, uh, yes, in yeah. the Australian SAS, yeah, uh, just lost a civil def defamation case accusing him of war crimes. One of the things he was accused of was, uh, yeah, bullying, threatening to shoot, making complicit with his war crimes his own men. I think Jesus. that kind of that kind of thing is like both much more common than anyone really understands, but also really puts the light to the idea that like. It's a brotherhood, and it's like, no, not necessarily, but, but not always. With right. that said, Alice, I mean, I have a question for you, and this is, I guess, more of a personal mm. question, but, like, you mm. yourself were training to be in the military for a long period of time. Was it not these same narratives sure. that captured your imagination? Oh, yeah, of course. But mine was sort of like... Not to be like, uh, I'm, I'm on so much more of a superior moral plane or anything. Uh, sure. But... You know, there was an idea of service involved, which does not appear in this, and it used mm. to. It mm -hmm. used to appear mm -hmm. in the World War II ones, it sort of, you know, transiently appeared in, like, the, the first modern warfare, but now it's just, this is what you do because it's cool. You're, like, hanging out with your bros, uh, and, you know, stuff appears and you, you go and do operator shit to it. And yeah. I think what's really funny, and I'm gonna put a beautiful podcast a bow on this episode Ooh. is that Ooh. what is missing from these games something which ideology has like taken from it mm -hmm. is a call of duty uh, oh, oh, how oh, fucking clever am I? oh shit no. modern warfare 2 <laughs> roman numerals <laughs> well 
Tell 20, us. 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, taking the time to come on our show again. Always appreciate yeah, having absolutely. you on. Is there anything that you'd oh, like it. to pitch, plug, etc. before we uh, wrap oh, up? Oh, uh, you, you can find me on Twitter at Alice Avazandam. I do three podcasts. I do a podcast about the intersection of tech and finance and capitalism called Trash Future. I do a podcast about a feminist viewing of movies that have something to say about masculinity called Kill James Bond. Mm -hmm. And I do a podcast about engineering disasters called Well, There's Your Problem. So please check out any one of those three that you feel like, or all three. Excellent. Um, and thanks so much for having me on, guys. Absolutely. It's yeah, I, always I, an absolute pleasure. I would I would really strongly recommend listening to, I know this is weird to say, but I think a really good inroad to Kill James Bond is the recent mm. live show trilogy that y'all did uh, for, oh, you, for yes. the Austin Powers trilogy. Uh, <laughs> it is it is one of the funniest things that I've listened to in a very, very long time. And I'm so sorry that you had to go through the process <laughs> of watching all three thank of those you, movies. Thank you. Yes. No, they, they are atrocious. But now, I mean, I, here's the thing. We're all we're all bonded together in mm. having to consume a terrible media product yep. uh, in order to, like, dunk on it for work. And really, that that makes us comrades in a like truer sense yeah, yeah we uh, we are troops we, we are, are operators that's we we are yeah. veterans now yes <laughs> yeah that's right yes. and of course uh, if you are listening to this episode and you're thinking hey i'd also love to get more of the worst of all possible worlds well do i have the offer for you uh if you <laughs> join go, our troops <laughs> join become one of our all troops it takes is money wow <laughs> go to patreon.com slash worst of all and you can get access to dozens upon dozens of bonus episodes join josh um, squad that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we actually had last week uh, Hussein, also from the Trash Future podcast, on uh, to talk about a uh, truly horrible children's radio drama made for Christian children. Uh, yeah. If you want to hear us unpacking a truly wild piece of reactionary propaganda uh, with another person who you most likely know if you uh, <laughs> listen to <laughs> Alice ever, uh, definitely check that one out. Uh, we'd love to have you as part of our ghost team. Oh, Ooh. nice. Um, Ooh. So this game is terrible, and it made me want to perhaps give up video games entirely. You've still got so much Zelda left to play. There is. There's mm. so much. There's so much, so much Tears of the for. Kingdom to enjoy. <laughs> but I feel like it's impossible to like try and come at this game because it is so politically weak. Like mm, it yeah. really, it, it it doesn't ever like fully commit to its its messaging. Like it's like, oh, yeah. we're gonna do a commentary on Mexico, but this isn't Mexico, Mexico, right? This is like mm -hmm. our fake version of Mexico. This is not the Middle East. This is a fake version of the Middle East. And you know what? Here's the thing. If you're going to be this full throated fascist piece of propaganda shit, at least fully own it, because in the words of mm. your own characters, there are only two games win <laughs> or lose. <laughs> I'm the worst of all possible AJs. I'm the worst of all possible Brian's and I'm the worst of all possible Josh's. See you next week.